All right, so hey guys, in the future, for you guys watching this, uh, if you're watching this, then mm -hmm. me and my buddies here say hi. Hi. And say Hello. who you are. So I'm, I'm Zodiac. Go. I'm Mackenzie. And I'm Michi. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's I'm also know. Morgan because we're me mamo. Yeah, we're me mamo. Me mamo. And, and we are me mamo. We are forever <laughs> me mamo. Yeah. And, Insert um, theme music. Yeah, we are here <laughs> for sharing and spewing our very raw and unfiltered Delta Rue and Undertale theories and connection stuff. But this is also uh, recorded from Twitch. So the people in Twitch get it live, obviously, and the people who are going to watch this on YouTube in the future, it's, it's, it's already happened, so I'm sorry. But we finished the two yes. chapters, and uh, if you guys, you know, are patient, <laughs> Morgan will be editing them down and putting them on his be channel yes, eventually. Yes, please be patient. I yes. beg of you, be patient. Yes, yes. But uh, we've also... finished chapter one and chapter two. And Morgan and yeah. Mackenzie here have separately finished the genocide route for, and the Snowgrave route for chapter one and chapter two. So, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's the intro. And now yeah. let's just get into the theory. So, Pyth. Yeah. Well, also, also, so, also, couple of disclaimers, also, yeah. couple of disclaimers. Oh, first disclaimers, of all, right. no, from sorry, this, set up. okay, from this point on, first of all, biggest disclaimer. From this point on, we, there will be massive spoilers for both all of Deltarune including other paths and things so if you want to see like the snowgrave route for example on your own just maybe stop watching um but also um there'll be spoilers for undertale because we will be talking about undertale in comparison or relation to delta rune yes whatever it is we talk about so yeah. if either of those you want to you don't want spoiled for you maybe don't participate because we're going to just it's all unhinged from here on out um the second one is just a, a language thing because uh, all three of us might be saying the word evil in relation to characters sometimes. And I, I think we all just want to make sure people don't get the wrong impression. None of us think that any character in Deltarune, like in Undertale, is like irredeemable, mustache twirling, pure evil, like in the way that cartoonishly you'd think about it. Yeah. We are more going to be using evil as like, a shorthand term for like antagonist, yeah, for antagonist um, or, and, like, or like bad a, intentions, um, or a misguided, very, like, yeah, misguided, or very or, sus, or very yes, selfish, very sus, sus. yes, um, yeah. So <laughs> just just know when we say the word like evil, we're meaning more like antagonist than we are yeah. just like the t how most people think of it. Yes, um, yes, so yes. don't so be mad if we call your faves evil. <laughs> we promise it's not like. We're not saying they're irredeemable or anything also, like that. Also, even though we're all artists here and two people in this call are game designers, none of us work with Toby Fox or the game. So none of this is fact. These are all fun theories we like as nerds and fans yes. of the series. We're yes. loudly speculating. Yes, 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 yes. Very um, loudly. Yes. Very, very, very speculating. Very, very loudly. Very loudly. <laughs> yes. So now, um, I think the... <laughs> <laughs> but, um so i think where we should start then i guess i'll start is the fact that toby fox himself has admitted that he's like you do not need to have played undertale to enjoy delta rune but he has said you really should like he's been even telling people now he's like you really should play undertale first you don't have to but you should and so I think that's like a really important thing to go into. <laughs> Your voice modifier turned on now. Oh, damn Who's it, laughing it? now? Oh, no! <laughs> no! I just laugh at both Wait, of it's you. weird. Voice changer's <laughs> off. The heck? Hold on. Let me. Let me. Do you have? Is, is it the mic problem again? I think it's the mic problem again. Give me Gosh, a hot second. Gosh darn it! We just Gosh, started. I know. We just started. Give me a hot second. It will okay. not take that long. Okay. Well, if you can still hear us, I'm gonna tell the chat. Uh, a way to start because all three of us combined have many thoughts. All of us yes. specializing in certain areas of thoughts. Yes. Um, but because just to help um, sort of narrow it down and give us a good starting point, uh, we do want to have the chat be involved in this if any of you are still participating or watching. Um, so uh, first of all, feel absolutely free to leave any thoughts you're having in the chat. And whenever we get a moment, we'll probably read them out loud and it will be on screen, obviously. And um, if but, you're if you are watching this on YouTube or something, comment down below what your false theory or, oh, theories yeah. are. Do it. Hello, um, hello. Okay. But yeah. I, so to I, start with, though, um, if any of y'all have any specific part or subject you want us to start talking about, 
please do tell us and we'll start kind of with there. Um, mm -hmm. You can phrase it however you would like. Uh, be creative. <laughs> but yeah, we figured right. we'd let the chat kind of decide where we start, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, I think my. what Mitchie was trying to say, though, is that it's heavily implied by Toby that you should play Undertale before Deltarune, because uh, personally, whenever I got Morgan, or the Zodiac, into this, uh, I started him off with Undertale, and we're doing the same thing with our friends who haven't played either Undertale or Deltarune, because there's a... There, there are just some things that are. Have I a live in a city. Experience. I'm sorry for the popo sounds. <laughs> I can't turn that off. It's fine. No, you're good. Uh, but I, I just feel like it could be a better experience if you play yeah. Undertale before. Well, even like, um, again, like it was. It's even some of the jokes and some of the characterizations mm -hmm. too. Like, even though it's subtle, it's just a different emotional thing. It's like you know our sadness over Metaton. If you go knock on that house and you don't know who the fuck that character is, you're just gonna be like, okay. This yeah. is somebody. I as don't know well why they're so sad. You, yeah, as well as you, when you meet Sans for the first time in Chapter 1, it's going to have a dialogue option of you being able to choose, hey, I've seen you before, yeah. or something mm -hmm. along or those even, lines. Um, in and you're not going to have a clue. Yeah, Yeah, and even in Chapter 1, too, uh, when you meet Undyne for the first time, you can literally ask her, like, how's Alphys? Or, like, yeah. bring up Alphys. Because if you play Undertale, you'll know why. Um, why they... they uh, do um like you know you're gonna obviously ask about it because it's brought up in undertale but when you bring it up in the game she's like what the fuck are you talking about yeah um so like again a new player would have no idea why that's even a subject you would bring up but you would if you did touch yeah. undertale and you yeah. kind of understand it um yeah, no, origami has some stuff though i know uh, i see that I guess Rossi, yeah rosie is asriel and the headband that's why he doesn't follow the same rules as everyone else because he is both darkner and lightner based off an of an object and based off of a being so that's exactly what i was uh going to talk about here when we were talking in chapter two the last stream that we just finished i watched a debunking video today um, about how Rawlsy is not Asriel, and it brought up a good couple of points. Um, one, this is my expertise yes. area, so because I've well, just hyper-focused on this. this I forgot about this. So whenever you're talking to the townspeople in Chapter 1 and 2, they bring up Azzy a lot. Like, they even have the nickname Azzy for him. And he's very oh, yeah. popular amongst the townsfolk. When you talk to Ralsei, the first chance you get in Chapter 1, he even states that he has no friends. He is lonely. Yeah. And he, a lot of times, brings up the fact that he just wants people to be around. Yeah. Why would Azriel in the overworld be so popular, have so many friends, go off to college where he also presumably has friends... But in the Darkner world, be like, I have no friends. I'm lonely, as well as being socially awkward. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's. Uh, so I, um, I personally like the theory because again, these are theories. So technically, none of us are right. wrong. We just don't. That's the whole yeah. point. Yes. We're just discussing it. You know, none of us are wrong. Yeah. None of and us are not, right. And we're not but... saying you're wrong either. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Neon, like, we're not saying that at I'm all. I'm sorry all. if that's what I came across yeah. as. Okay. Okay. Another disclaimer. Each other. Just be, if we, even if we disagree with you, chat, we promise. We're not saying that you're wrong. Yeah, at no, all. no. Right. Like personally, we're having a good, like, healthy. Who, yeah, who the like, fuck really knows? Yeah, like the personally, only people that know is Toby and the people who are working. On yeah, it. so like personally yes. for me, first of all, one Rousey is sus. Rousey is so sus in so many yes. ways, and Morgan can go on a big thing about that, and I know he's gonna want to. Oh, I'm about to. to. <laughs> yeah. But something I want to say: what what my <laughs> implication of Rousey is as a basic: what is he? I think he is a being of pure darkness because, like, when he dies, he just vanishes. You know what I mean? And we've implied that he's different because it's the fact that, like, he doesn't turn to stone in other things compared to everybody else. Because, right. like he said, like, the darkness just mm -hmm. doesn't, like, match, you know? And I think, though, if, if Rousey had to be represented by an item because if you've played chapter one and chapter two of Deltarune, you know that everybody is an item. Like, like it's, it's not even yes. like 
It's not even, like, hinted at. Like, it's the whole reason why Ralsei's, like, literally collect a bunch of shit and bring it with you to bring yeah. the people it's over here. It's why, literally, you have the Jack of Spades and the rules card in your pocket yeah. when they join you. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you, when you leave. So that's what I think it is. So I think that Ralsei is the headband Chris had, but I also think Ralsei could also totally be, like, an imaginary friend kind of situation Chris might have had when they were younger. But Morgan's the big Rousey guy, so let's let Morgan just yeah. dab at okay. it. Well, one, one more oh, thing before yep, you go yep. off, because I know you're going to go off, <laughs> Megan. Um, I have a, I have a in, laundry yeah. list. <laughs> in my interpretation, I do like the headband idea. And yes. the reason why is because a lot of the reason why... Toriel and Asgore even got that headband for Chris is because they wanted to be more like Asgore, Asriel, uh, and Toriel. So I feel like Ralsei could be like the, yes, a being of pure darkness, but at the same time, being the ideal version of Chris, of what Chris was. Chris's persona, one might say. Which is also (laughs) hilarious. Because Chris is not a huge fan of Ralsei, but we can get into that. Yeah, yeah. You can, okay. You can take the floor. All right. <laughs> so I have a whole thing. Just so y'all understand, listen, fucking oh no. Mackenzie's whole thing is when we. Oh, hi. You're, you're roboting really bad all of a sudden. You're cutting out. Oh, oh great. Love it. Fucking fan. Fucking fantastic. Like, maybe just uh, dip out and dip back in real quick. I know your iPad just does that, but it might help. I'm not on my iPad. Oh. You're I'm like, not. Yeah. Well, you're not roboting I, anymore. Well, you're good. Yeah, you're not roboting anymore at all. All right. Just so the chat can understand, like, listen, Mackenzie's specialty here is fucking uh, Gaster. Like, yeah. just that's going to be her territory. Uh, Michio I'm Re- fucking ready. <laughs> he hasn't played Undertale in a very long time, but knows it intimately. Um, just, but I'm, uh, just to give you an idea, I talked to Michi after we played Chapter 2. And I Uh asked her if I could send her, I I said I had thoughts, and I was like, I'm going to send you my thoughts, but I'm going to separate them into my Rousey thoughts and my non-Rousey thoughts. My Rousey thoughts were long, (laughs) but they fit into one Discord message. My Rousey thoughts had to be broken up into three Discord messages. Mm -hmm. Just so you can understand this. (laughs) Um, So, I have a lot. First of all, I'm just going to get, I want to debunk some of the things that, like, I've read online that I just personally don't think are it. First of all, I don't think Rousey is evil. I think, I don't blame people for thinking that in Chapter 1 because he was extremely suspicious and we had no real reason to, like, you know, he was a bit weird. And that's, you know, I don't really blame people for thinking that. Um, And I also, I, but I don't think he's evil, especially with Chapter 2. And I don't think, I didn't think as much in Chapter 1, not by the end of it anyway. Um... But I, obviously, he's so, he is so suspicious, and he's hiding something. And so I have a, but I don't think he's evil like everyone says, because a lot of people seem to think that, like, he's, like, must clearly be the bad guy, and here's all the reasons why. I don't think he is. And Chapter 2 kind of solidifies this for me, because, um, so obviously, if none of y'all have played Snowgrave, Snowgrave is an extremely depressing route that, like, even when you're playing it, it just feels wrong. Yeah, because from what I've heard now, I haven't played Snowgrave, but I watched a sl- like a, a sped up Snowgrave like playthrough, and so what ended up happening is like the difference in my mind from Snowgrave to the Genocide Route was in the Genocide Route in Undertale, it seemed like like vicious and mean, and you were bloodthirsty, like you were much more of mm-hmm. like monstrous in a figurative sense, while Snowgrave just felt wrong. It's from how I've heard people describe yeah. it, like the difference. Like genocide felt almost felt like a weird way. And genocide could almost be explained away with the fact that uh, you can do genocide almost by accident by just thinking that you need to complete the game like a normal RPG. Yeah, like Because that normal, was kind like a, of the point. Yeah, like a normal grinding RPG. Yeah. Right. So, um, but with Snowgrave, it is so personal. You learn a whole element about like Chris's and Noel's relationship that like is just you learn more about it and it tells you more lore that you learn in the normal game but it just feels so wrong because you fuck up noel so badly so much so that i think it's fucking oh who is it there's a i think it's queen actually or someone i think it's queen who says that noel needs to rest like she needs like she needs to rest which you know when the antagonist of that game 
Because if I'm remembering right, it was Queen who said that, right? Yeah, it was Queen. Yeah. So, and when the antagonist of that game, granted, Queen is a much more quirky and much more likable, like, even her motives weren't that bad. Her motives was, I just want the world to be happy, and also be the, do- like, the dominating force yeah, in that yeah, world. Like, yeah, but, like, her yeah, motives like- are really not that evil, but still, when the main antagonist is, like, essentially almost subtly criticizing your own actions of what you've done to Noel, you know you've kind of fucked up a little bit, mm-hmm. like, you know? And um, I mean that, and you know, killing Birdly, and yeah, that and is killing Birdly. That it's like I res- came to respect Birdly a lot. Yeah, and you <laughs> like the way you just you treat Noel in that version. Mm-hmm. Like it's a weird thing of almost like you do get her therapy because in both okay because in both Snowgrave and in normal route for chapter two, Noel's whole arc is that she gets more stronger. She stands up for herself. She has a bit more of a like. You know, she has a bit more of an assertiveness about her than she did in the beginning, but they both go about it in very different ways. One is like a healthy growth to that point, and the other mm-hmm. one is extremely unhealthy. Yeah. Um, so that's a long way. I'm going to talk more about the Snowgrave route because it has to bring up, it, with yeah. that, is going to bring up something else with a theory I have for Rousey about what his purpose is. Oh, because it's oh. the big thing. Okay. Well, while, um, we're, while we're saying that, though, I think, and I know it might be before we get into that, I think it's actually really important we bring this up, like, now, is the fact that... And I do not think this is a theory because the game is, like, pretty much, like, throwing it in our face in every chapter of Deltarune. We, the player, are a character. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. If anyone was not... has not put it together, we and Chris are not the same person. Uh Uh-huh. No. Period. Yeah. That has been objectively put into i even tried to do it in the subtly in the in the first chapter but i didn't really vocalize it um whenever chris like if you need any more evidence on top of everything else you've been shown that we and chris are not the same person when chris rips their soul out to go do their own thing and throws it in the birdcage you can move that heart around in the birdcage yeah but you cannot get you can't move chris but you can move the heart because we are controlling chris via the soul and, um, yeah. and also, um, and I didn't realize this, I know, like, they didn't bring much attention to it, but it is in our first part of the, the playthrough, was when you get to the very first save in Deltarune, the very first sparkle, it says Chris in the save file, and you save over Chris's file. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I didn't catch that, that it was Chris yeah. and a bunch of things. It was Which like, I'm oh, actually... I- fun fact, uh, if you go into any of the other save files and start all over again... Mm-hmm. Chris isn't even there. It's just empty. Yeah. Really? Once you have the game and you start, mm-hmm. it's just there. Yeah, yeah because he so, deleted his file, their files. That's so right. They don't, it's gone. Their file does not exist. Mm-hmm. Ever but that's again. what we, and, So that's so that's why I think it's important to say that when we go which, more into the Rousey theory is the fact that this isn't a theory. It has been so thrown in our face yeah, in every it's, chapter. That's not even theory. That's yeah. just fact. Yeah. At this yeah, point, we the player um, are a separate yeah, character. Which in also, the game. I have more thoughts about that because uh-huh. there was something I thought about while we were playing, and I'm gonna. But I don't want to bring it up yet. I wanted to talk about Rousey first, but I'm gonna bring it up in a little bit about Chris and relating to that save file. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, back to my Rousey thing. The reason why I think that we have been shown that Rousey is not, while he may still be an antagonist at some point in the game or that his motives are a bit iffy and we don't quite know for sure what it is, um, we do know that he's not really evil because at the moment, the most evil action you can take in the game is the Snowgrave route, which is, worse than anything the fucking king did in the chapter one Mm -hmm. it's worse than anything queen does in chapter Mm -hmm. two even though birdly's an ass it's nowhere near as bad as that it's just it's bad and um so the reason why is because rousey seems to have no indication that that happened doesn't have any part of that. Again, I also don't think Rousey's omniscient, but that's going to get into my thing later. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have any indication of that. He would seem like very against that because you have to go out of your way to like avoid the stuff that he wants you to see like in order to do it um if anything that route the snowgrave route fucks with what he knows and what he actually wants you to do so can't really be evil when the most evil action you take in the game at least in the more traditional evil sense is like you only you the player have action over that not him yeah and um where I'm going to get to that. Uh, another thing I want to disbunk. First of all, we already talked about it earlier, but anyone who says that Rousey's a girl because he acts effeminate, fuck off. 
Like, yeah. you are wrong. You're the only people I will say with full confidence you are completely wrong. Yeah. That's just a, that is oh, gross, goodness. that is sexist, and that is <laughs> yes. kind of transphobic. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, no. Rousey's just a cute, gender nonconforming dude. Shut up. <laughs> like literally literally the whole thing is the power of fluffy boys is with you or some shit at the beginning of the game. Right. Yes. And everybody says he him pronouns yeah. when referring to Rousey. Yes. So Um and there's also and you could say, well maybe he's hiding it. You know he's hiding his gender. But why? But why, why would he be no, doing yeah, that? Literally, especially, <laughs> literally especially what purpose? Especially in I'm this... Toriel. <laughs> well no, it's also in in the world that is implied, it, it does no. not make any sense to have like no, sexism and stuff yeah. like that. You know, even if it was like there could be the possibility, like if I wanted to give a long shot for how this would make sense, it would be that like, oh, he's not actually like anything like Azriel, but he's trying to pretend to be Azriel. So maybe it's a female character like using male pronouns to pretend to be as no. but like why no. why not just be a she that somehow acts like Azriel? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like it just yeah. doesn't. Um but yeah, that's the only thing I'm gonna say is just solid mm-hmm. You're wrong, and that's weird. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, I don't think that he's Asriel. I don't blame people for thinking that. I mean, his name is a Me rearrangement either, yeah. of Asriel's le- letters, and that's what everyone thought originally. But there's multiple reasons why you could kind of prove that it's not. Yeah. Um, for one reason, the rooms in Queen's Castle, for example, um, Asriel had a room, um, but Rousey did not. Um, yeah, Rousey you could say he states- is Asriel. But also, well, like, Rousey even states that he does not have a room. Yes. Um, so why would he do that? Unless he's, I guess he's trying to lie and pretend he's not Asriel, I guess. Which but, like, again, there's also more on that. Why? Why? First of all, why would, could he be here? If he's Asriel and Asriel is off at college somewhere, how is he here? Unless he uh, died yeah. or something, but I'm pretty fucking sure we would have heard he was dead by now. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and and it wouldn't and it wouldn't be a thing where the entire town is excited for when Asriel's coming yeah. home from college. This, like, well, you, oh yeah, even, and like like mm-hmm. lightners even have to be in those specific places where the darkner worlds are. Yeah, to be yes. in the darkner world. Yes. Yeah. Plus, and that's another thing that I'm thinking is that. There's he couldn't be and also I'm gonna get into the thing that I don't think he's a lightener because I know a lot of people also believe he's secretly a lightener and I'm gonna this kind of corresponds with the he's not Azrael thing. Um but even if he was just a lightener, um if he was a lightener, the only way he could have gotten to that computer lab is by getting out of his dark world and walking there. Are you genuinely telling me no one fucking saw him? Like yeah. at mm. all. Like that's just that would be a bit of a stretch. That's and that would I... also yeah. Well, that's why I was saying that's why I like leaning more towards the the theory of again, it could either be the imaginary friend or like you said in a weird way like Chris's persona or like monster self because Well, even could... Neon says and I like this mm-hmm. thought too or Rosie is Chris's subconscious mm-hmm. because Chris is the one making the dark fountain. Yeah, which no, could be why like Chris doesn't too. like which which could be why Chris doesn't like him, which I want to get right. into. Yeah, cuz um... it could also be a thing too where also yeah, Chris is a teenager now, but again, if we're also just harking back to maybe the headband theory, again, if Rousey was based off of a physical object like Darkners are, it would make sense because I don't know about y'all, but when I was a little kid, I was not creative when it came with names with stuff. So like, mm-hmm. honestly, an anagram of your older brother's name isn't that weird to me. Yeah. And... um. So yeah, and I'm going to also get into the, I'm just going to debunk the Lightner thing, because yeah. I know when Chapter 1 came out, it was a big theory at the time mm-hmm. that like, oh, Rousey is actually a Lightner. Um, so here's my my quick hit list on that. First of all, something that you'll notice when you play through the game if you're observant about it. Um, all Lightners have black and white portraits, all Darkners have colored portraits, the ones that have them. And this is something that does not change no matter what. This like- has not changed. So... For like it's would be impossible for Rousey to just be a lightener, but for some reason he is the only one that doesn't obey that color scheme. Um, so that's already a bit weird, and that would just be a poor, that'd be kind of a cheap tactic to do that, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, so that's already a big thing on that. Secondly, when Rousey goes down in battle, when Susie or Chris and I'm also assuming Noel go down in battle, they just all over yeah like no i've I've seen it when when i've seen yeah yeah, i've seen it when noel like gets knocked out she just kind of like sits there and looks down yes um when rousey does he just completely disappears other than his clothes 
so and they make, and they make em- extra emphasis of this because in chapter one he's got the hat and chapter two he doesn't have the hat in chapter three i kind of want him to have the hat again but that's just me that's a personal <laughs> but um when like i noticed it in our in our playthrough of the second one where literally like when he is down like you really notice that there is nothing there because mm-hmm. he doesn't have the hat so it's just you literally see the yeah. scarf and the clothes so he just vanishes um, which is why, like, again, that would be weird. Why is he the only Lightner that just disappears when he's downed in battle? And we don't have much comparison with other Darkeners to say that, but I also think that him vanishing kind of does still go along with the whole, he might be a imaginary friend, quote unquote, or a subconscious thing. Yeah. Um, which we're going to get into, but yeah, I just think, I think that if you just take two seconds to look at it, he's not a Lightner. I do think he is something a little in between or, uh, mm. like Mitchie said, could just be pure darkness as well, as opposed to being having an object. Because in a, almost in a way, because I've thought about this a little bit, in a way, all of the people based on objects are a little bit of both. They yeah. are spiritually a darkener, but they do have a real world comparison. If hypothetically, if Rousey is just pure imagination and isn't actually, it might be symbolic of a real world object, but isn't a literal real world object, that could be why he's pure darkness. Yeah. Is because he is not actually a physical object. He is purely a manifestation of something. And, um, which I don't think is a completely irrational thought. Yeah. Um, That's also why I think it's also, cause it's really important. Again, the fact that Ralsei has pink horns because Toriel and Asgore. Now we haven't seen Asriel. I mean, yeah, we haven't seen Asriel yet, so we don't know. But they all have white horns. They have the same color that matches their, like, fur and, colors. Mm-hmm. And he has been reusing the sprites from the game. Yeah. So there would it would not really make sense for him to change the color of Asriel's horns from the actual game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, so I'm going to get into this, too, now. Because now I want to get into my whole theory about uh, some of the artsy, symbolic stuff that, yeah, like, just yeah. leads to him being suspicious in general, because mm-hmm. in case anyone hasn't noticed it, um, but also Neo, Neo Aragami said, I have another, Chris is going to be the big bad and Susie's going to have to fight and save them. I am debating on that because so, here's okay. the thing. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll say mine okay. after yours. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But like, we'll get to that. I just also, I'm so sorry. This is just, this is the one thing I have so many fucking thoughts for. So that's why I can just go off on yeah. this. But like, <laughs> no, it's fine. So, it's more. It's a ramble. Here's That's the, the point. Here's some things to point out because I may not be big on the technical side of things. I'm not good at remembering like what songs I've heard and haven't heard or what number sequence I've seen or haven't seen or whatever the hell like that. I'm not huge on what I am big on is artistic symbolism and foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the most massive fucking blatant things I can point to to point to how I think at some point in the story Ralsei is going to be an enemy of some kind may not be a malicious enemy but an enemy an antagonist to us or Chris or both is because you fight a dummy of him that is the most literally the most blatant you are going to have to face this character at some point in the game Mm mm-hmm there is no other reason why you would have a route like you can, a, yeah you can definitely compare that part to whenever you were playing that game in uh chapter two with queen mm-hmm. and then at the end you fight queen the same way yeah. you played in that game and yeah it, and it's even back to undertale too you face a dummy when toriel is teaching you how to fight and you fight a dummy later on in the game it's a different well, dummy it's the same but it's still Flowey the same too. yeah va- yeah so it's like, this has been a very constant theme. So I think uh-huh. that literally having a Rousey dummy is the biggest you are going to have to deal with him at the other side of this uh, combat screen yeah. at some point. I don't yeah. think, now, I don't think he's going to be like a final boss situation. No, I, did, I, I don't did, think you know, so here's either. Here's the thing. I did. I originally thought this like a while ago, but after finishing chapter two with you guys and looking into stuff with the genocide route, and some other things. My personal theory, and this is, again, totally beyond water. I think the final big bad is actually going to be us, the player. That would be really cool. Ooh, I think it would be I something like where Susie, Chris, and Rousey would, like, have to fight us, or we would have to fight them. That's what that I think really the, cool. like, final big bad. I don't know how that would be. function mechanically as a game, but I like it. <laughs> I don't either, but, like, I that's just like what I'm game. leaning at. Because, like, again... It, it just, it feels like we're getting to that point because yeah. like, 
Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, uh, no, but that's why I think that at some point, if anything, I think almost in chapters three, four, five, I think at some point it's going to come out there. Yeah. Personally, I just feel like that would make more sense because the only reason why is because it would be weird for him to be a final boss when it was so blatant from the start that he's like, in, he's suspicious. He's yeah. hiding something. Well, plus, okay. Um, again, when it comes to foreshadowing in the game, we're like really important foreshadowing in the game that we've had so far is there's a carnival. There's the bunker, mm-hmm. and we have Azrael coming home. Those are three really mm-hmm. big events we know are eventually going to happen in this game. Because mm-hmm. they, they um, bring it up multiple times. Yeah. So, uh, and there's a lot of other secrets and things that we're going to get to later in the story. Now, the next thing, the next thing I want to point out in terms of symbolism is the big one. It's about the fucking prophecy. Oh, yes. first of all, yes. the fact let me start out with the- this for anyone who hasn't noticed it. Rousey has changed that stupid fucking prophecy three times. Oh, three? I only caught mm-hmm. two. What was the... Three. Were- all right, ready, Mitchie? Yeah. At the beginning of the game, when you first meet him, he introduced the story saying that there is going to be these fountains that open and we have to keep the balance. And it is only a human, a monster, and a prince from the dark. Only yes. those three together can seal the fountain. And it is aided by... By the artwork shown of all yes. three of them sealing yes. the fountain together, mm-hmm. which means that is how he meant it when he said it that way. Mm-hmm. Immediate, almost super, and I mean, I do mean super quick after, after Susie starts to kind of turn on the group and is starting to kind of go off on her own and do her kind of thing, he changes it to only Chris can seal the fountain, which yeah. is true, that's but right. that's not the story he told us in the beginning. That's exactly. right. That's right. I didn't think of that. And then the. Which, the and, mm-hmm. Yeah, which technically, yes, it's the idea that maybe the prophecy was more that only the three of you can actually get to the point where Chris can seal the fountain, but that's still not what he told us in the beginning. He said, he phrased it in a way that made it feel like only you three can save the world. You, all of you are the avatar, but now it's all, it's just Chris. Yeah. Um. Although, it, again, technically, I think he's actually more talking to us, the player, when he says that, but I'm going to get into that. That's a whole other thing. But, um... The other thing, and the third time he changes it is literally in this game. It didn't get brought up much in chapter two because it hasn't had to. It's just the idea of, okay, we got to go seal the fountains. Here we go. Until, but at the very end. Until the queen when, fight. Yeah. Well, once, you, once he has to explain to everyone new why you can't keep the dark fountain open, uh, he adds a whole new element to it. Before it was just that a po- Oh, also, fuck, I forgot. I didn't bring it up in the original game because I didn't want to spoil. Uh-huh. Um... I also noticed another big change that he had that he's made in his story. The first time he talks about it, I don't know, like, it's really subtle. And maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but technically he says the apocalypse has to happen first before we can seal the fountains. I would have to go back and check on that, but I th- I think you are right. Yeah. No, he, the way he said remember. it was that a great apocalypse would happen and only then will three heroes rise up to save the, to seal the fountains and save the world. Well, okay. Not only that, but, um, there's been Which a doesn't giant... make sense anymore if you think. Mm-hmm. It, it does, doesn't make any it, sense. It doesn't make any sense, but also the fact that, um, in chapter two, when you hear about the roaring night, which a very smart play on words there, Toby, because that's like all there's like this game is so much like on playing on words, all like the whole thing mm-hmm. we've had it the whole time. But all of a sudden, they uh, uh, Rousey brings up, oh yeah, then the Titans are gonna come. And I remember like, yes. I, know, I know we didn't have webcams when we did the audio, we have the PNG tubers on screen right now. But literally, my face, like, I was like doing like that, what the fuck, like artist girl meme face, where mm-hmm. it's like, what? I'm like, what titans Rousey? yeah why didn't exactly. you bring up well, titans also, the first chapter? one thing mm-hmm. one thing did you notice that their heads looked like the same no i did i noticed their heads looked like mm-hmm. the same and i noticed the one in the middle was the bleeding eyes from chapter one mm-hmm. no i mm-hmm. definitely noticed that i just didn't want to say anything because it was a serious cutscene. but no i noticed they were the save file star yeah so it's like, and then on top of that, he also changed it a little bit because originally the the urgency we were given, again, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but the urgency we were kind of given beforehand was that, like, everyone's going to die. Yeah. Everyone's, it's going to destroy the whole world. But then it changed to where it's more that the Darkeners are going to be unfunctional and the Lightners are going to be lonely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's, and it, which and is it, not it, quite the same. It's not the same, and it harkens to the song. Yeah. The, like the, and, the, the, the really important Undertale. Yeah. The now, I don't think 
that him wanting to close these fountains is like for bad reasons. Mm -hmm. I think that there are good reasons, but I think, but his prophecy is weird to say the least. Yeah. Either it's completely made up or the actual truth of the prophecy he hasn't want to express to us, or he's been exaggerating it this whole time. Yeah. But, um, but just, so that's already a big thing because like, you could say that maybe it's just poor writing, but technically it's also a big sign of lying when someone changes their story every time they talk Mm -hmm. about it. But, Mm -hmm. um, or, or, when people don't follow a script hmm. because you see which i'm gonna get queen, into yeah because you see after the queen fight after the queen fight when everyone's like well why don't we just say here and literally everyone's like yeah this place rocks and you see rousey be like huh no no it's not like, yeah. like, like very much like that's no and not not in the like cliche oh you're heroes that's not what you say like he's genuinely surprised that everyone wants to just vibe in the cyber world right which could be a it could actually be a point in his corner that maybe there is an actual like world might get destroyed type deal mm-hmm. that possibly could be still a thing but it's either he's like he could be exaggerating it or it could be like the real reasons why that might happen might be a bit more complicated yeah. than he wants to tell us about. But um, so that's already a big thing. But now I want to talk more about that prophecy because there's another big artistic symbolism. I don't think Rousey's a pro- the prince in that prophecy. Like he wants I to pretend either. he is. I don't either. Because p- most people who play the game and have never heard of these characters or don't know what to expect would probably have not noticed this. I only noticed this when I played it with Mackenzie because I've seen fan art of Lancer. I knew who he was. Mm-hmm. Technically, so Lancer's a prince, right? He's the prince. He's the son of the king who takes over the the world and opened the fountain, or not opened the fountain, but he kept the fountain open and things like that. In the story, we are introduced cinematically to a human, a monster, and a prince. We are first introduced to the human, the main character, our vessel, all of that kind of stuff. We're then introduced to the monster being Susie, the person who comes with us into the darkness. We aren't introduced to Rousey next. We are introduced to Lancer next, just not officially. But he shows up. He's the first major character and the first prince that shows up, even though he's attacking us. Yeah. yeah. But storytelling wise, that means he's the prince of the dark from the prophecy. That's what I think, too, especially with the fact that, again, I I think that more, too, now, especially with the fact that, like, we also carry around Lancer in our pocket, because I don't think that's going to mm-hmm. be a just chapter two thing. I think it's going to no, be a thing. Where, I didn't like, actually... Um, I didn't actually show you um, fucking uh, what I, I checked. Um, when we are in the um, the light world, uh, rules and Lancer are still in our pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't leave. Like, even after I think we stepped into the dark world again, when we left, they were still there. Yeah. Um, also, another thing is that uh, there's two points that I want to place for Lancer. Mm-hmm. You couldn't have gotten to the fountain without him rallying up his whole kingdom and coming to get his father from basically killing Chris, Susie, and Ralsei. Um, In chapter two, you wouldn't have been able to get out of the rooms if it wasn't for Lancer because Ralsei wasn't doing a fucking thing. Yeah. Because Ralsei was Mm -hmm. a butler. Yeah, and and, uh, Ralsei didn't technically teach teach Susie kindness. Lancer did. It was Lancer, yeah. No, and then, like, okay, I want to bring this up because this this could also go into this because this is actually a really good point. I didn't even think of this. Uh, Julia, this is actually a really good uh, theory you have right here. It's like, one person I follow has the idea that each dark world is specifically tailored to a certain character. The first one allowed Susie to be a bad guy and then open up and grow more as a character. While the second chapter, we got really attached to Birdie or Birdly's desires and, you know, his, his backstory and his growth as a character as well as Noel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause even after they get out of the dark world, even though Birdly and Noel think that it's a dream, even Birdly kind of has a change of character of like, well, maybe they're not, so bad to where I can't study with them or maybe I'm not as smart as I think I am Mm -hmm. and I need these people with me Mm -hmm. I mean maybe I need to be less of an asshole is basically what I'm saying well that was the thing Mm -hmm. with Susie too Susie's thing was oh you know maybe I can open up and trust people yeah yeah maybe I don't have to be mean all the time yeah and uh but yeah so I think that Rousey has and plus he even hasn't brought up the real like human monster and prince like in the later things either like in the later versions of his prophecy i i mean at least in the version in chapter two 
Um, but uh, fucking like, I think he's inserted himself into this prophecy so that to help gain trust and so that you'll kind of go along with this whole thing. And I think that's the best place I could probably talk about what I actually think Rousey's purpose serves. Again, I think I do very much agree with a lot of the theories that he could be an imaginary friend or he could be symbolic of the horns or he could be, as I jokingly say, Chris's fursona, more specifically their subconscious. Um, I do agree with those. But I think what his purpose serves in Deltarune at the moment, for one thing, we know that Rousey in some way has some kind of meta shit that we like that other characters simply don't have. He oh. knows Susie and Chris's names the moment they walk into the door. Mm-hmm. He knows, um, he somehow knows how to make you go watch Susie so you actually see plot happen as opposed to sitting around waiting for it to happen, even though we aren't those characters. Yeah. Um, he knows, like, it just there's a lot of stuff that he says that seems very um, meta and very not, like, just playing a character in a role or whatever. Um I think that his purpose in the story, especially after seeing Snowgrave that I'm going to get into, I think he's trying to be a story guide. Like a narrator? I think that he is aware that this is a he game. He is a DM railroading yes. the fuck out of his He's players. trying to railroad us on this story. <laughs> and the reason why I think that is because despite the fact that he is sort of the, the antithesis of Susie in the sense that he wants us to act and be nice as opposed to just kill everything... Technically, if you go the no mercy routes, he doesn't really stop you and he still travels with you regardless. Um, speaking in the, the fucking chapter one and chapter two, I'm not talking about Snowgrave. I just want to make it clear. No mercy in chapter two is not the same as Snowgrave. You actually have oh, to do special not. stuff to get to Snowgrave. Um, and that's what I'm about to get into. Because when you take the no mercy route... And even at the start, when you show the tendencies that you want to just kill things and you don't really care, he doesn't stop you. Yeah. In fact, when you, I know that I, I haven't seen this myself. I want to, but I, this is Mackenzie um, who's told me this. <laughs> when you attack Rousey's dummy, if you just keep attacking it as opposed to actually acting and hugging it like he asks you, he just sort of caves and says like, mm-hmm. all right, I get it. I understand your feelings about me. Yeah. Like. So he doesn't really stop you from being going no mercy, but in Deltarune, unlike Undertale, no mercy will still technically get you to the ending of the chapter. Yeah. It doesn't get you a weird ending like Snowgrave does. It gets you it still gets you through the game. Mm-hmm. It's yes. just a different different way to go about it and has different consequences that are more subtle. Um I remembered an old theory that the Dark World was Susie and Chris playing something like D&D. I saw that. Um, hey, I, I, I wouldn't be mad. Listen, <laughs> I, I, but I also think that, again, with, with chapter one, with how it was set up, and the fact that for the people who, you know, it isn't in the future and the, all the games out and, you know, maybe found this video, who knows, or this stream... Um, at the time of this, literally, it took two years to get chapter two. Not really Toby's fault. There were other things going on. Like, he also got hurt yeah. and stuff and, you know, COVID. But um, because of that, a lot of people just had two years to be like, oh, okay, this was a cool little thing, you know. And then, well, because it, it literally wasn't until the release of chapter two that everyone was like, oh, there's going to be seven chapters. Holy crap. This is going to be like, you know, like this is going to be a bigger game than we thought. So... I think that mm-hmm. that theory wasn't bad for what Deltarune originally was. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I do like yeah. that theory too. But but with how we're it, going now with Chapter 2, I do not think that theory well, is at all not accurate. In, well, not only that, in the Snowgrave route, you actually yeah, I wanna... kill Birdly. Yeah, you, do you kill actually Birdly. murder him. Yeah. He doesn't he wake does up. He does not yeah. wake up in yeah. the White well, World. Also, the dialogue option changes. So, okay, uh, Long story short, for Snowgrave, I know we're gonna talk more about it in a minute, but um, yeah, I'm about to get it because that's a, a Snowgrave has so much to do with my Rousey guide. Yeah, theory. no, no, no. But what I want to say was, um, so in Snowgrave, aka the genocide route for for chapter two, um, when you wake up in the library, because you do wake up in the library, uh, Noelle's like, ha ha, what a nightmare, and Birdly does not wake up. But when everyone else leaves, if you go into the closet. And a di- the dialogue option's different. The text says it looks big enough to hide a body. Like, it's big enough for a person yeah. to hide in it. So it's, yeah. like, it's like, heavily implied that Krish might have stashed Birdly's body. Ooh. 
mm-hmm. in the closet. Because mm-hmm. you can't go back in the Yeah, you can't once go you back go after you because you collect oh, all the stuff and you God, lock it out. I hate that. Yeah, so it's like yeah. heavily implied. And you only get that option if Burnley does not wake up. Yeah. And and the Snowgrave Road as well. When you do have the option to kill, when you have the option to do Snowgrave, spoilers. But um, mm-hmm. it says on the side that it's fatal. It just yes. says that it's fatal. It takes 100 TP and it's fatal. Yeah. And so he's dead. He's straight up dead. And um, mm, but Snowgrave has so much to do with my Rousey guide theory. So I'm not going to dive right into it because there's also a lot to bring up with the secret bosses relating to Rousey. Hey, spam because, hey. hey. So, oh, right. <laughs> first of all, to do both of the secret bosses, you don't need to complete them in order to beat the game, period. No, you don't. You can easily skip them and you're fine. And part of that is, and like, well, in the Jevil fight, he doesn't say anything. I, have, I also have the feeling that that was because Toby probably didn't have everything thought through, so he didn't really have any mm-hmm. interesting dialogue oh, yeah, yeah, to make yeah. the characters say. Um, but you don't have to beat Jevil to complete that fight. Um, but in the Spamton fight, when you do the secret fight, we saw it because when we played Chapter 2 originally, um, Rousey has a very, and he has a, actually, I've noticed that he has done this a little bit in other cases as well, just not as extreme as this one. When Spamton, like, dies, essentially, at the end of his fight, and both Chris and Susie are concerned about it, he has a very blasé attitude about it, of like, oh, well, we did the mercy route, we did it, we're good, we can go now, we shouldn't it, yeah, think too much about it, is, it. It is completely out of character, because the fact that no matter because even I was surprised at the the implication that like again the implication is we freed Spamton but he did die. Yes, you know, yeah. and that's Which, why like um, you also mean- we did the best we could. There yeah. was nothing more we could do. Yeah. but we know that the characters don't exactly, yeah. and that's the um, big thing. Yeah, Mackenzie. I also want to point something out. Uh, Rosie said something about, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, God. Um, what are you thinking of? Because I might be thinking of the shit. same thing. He said something about, uh, like, something happened and we should just accept it. Well, that's kind of how Rosie was. We, we kind of just accepted him in the group without any, like, question we're about having, it. There's an ad. I don't know if there's an ad for everybody, but we oh, have shit. an ad. Oh, I'm there's sorry. I, I, I didn't well, mean to hit that. Sorry. Do, do you remember what... That was Morgan, though. You no, know I'm what gonna, I'm talking about, right? Like, are you talking specifically about Rousey's dialogue? Shit. Yes. Um, hold on. Well, no, yeah. Um, no, that's what he said. Yeah. He became our ally. We should just accept it. That's literally yes. what he said. Yeah. That, yes. Okay, but hang on. We're, okay. we're having an no, ad. I know. I know. I'm us. just trying to figure it out in my brain. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's literally what he said, so I don't... Yeah. yeah. Okay, hang on. Third ad. Come on. It goes off of seconds on my end, so I don't know how many there are. I apologize. There's three. Second. Yeah, I thought I turned the auto ads off. Julia has another good theory, but I want to wait to actually talk about that because yeah. I think that you, because okay. you've had, you have a lot of the theories about, uh, or Dreama does too, but like you have a lot of yeah. theories about why the dark worlds are happening and the theming about them, but I want to yes. talk about are Rousey we, before so we get we, into that. Yeah. We good? Is the ad gone? Yeah, we're good. Uh, okay. I, there's no more ads on my right. end. Uh, um, on my, hold on. One second. Yeah. Um, okay, we're good. Oh, yeah. um, Go ahead and repeat okay, it. Okay, so, so what I was going to say is... Uh, Spam... Uh, not Spamton. Uh, Rosie's dialogue towards Spamton, too, is like, he is now our ally, let's just accept it. Which is very interesting to me, and thank you, Dreema, if you are watching this. Because uh, one of my friends, Dreema, she mentioned that... Uh, hey, that's kind of how... We were with Rosie in chapter one because it was. We were just like, oh yeah, he's our ally now, so we just kind of accepted it. And that's kind of what Rosie wants us to do with Spamton, which is very strange. Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to But that's like, okay, because the reason why I get into that is like, I think a lot of people, again, would look at that and rightfully so would think that like, okay, that's weird, so he doesn't care about Spamton, he doesn't care about, like, that this happened. And in a way, he also had the same attitude towards Queen. I didn't really notice it before, but when you defeat Queen and her battery runs out, he's not, mm-hmm. like, Noelle is like, oh my god, Queen, are you okay? He's very much like, 
oh well guess her battery ran out yeah oh well like i think part of that is i don't think it's him being mean i think it's the fact that with queen specifically he knows she's not dead yeah because of course he does because again i think he has meta knowledge about how the game at its basic core is going Mm -hmm. um well, Again, which I'm gonna get. I don't think he's omniscient, but I think he does have like meta knows that you are in a game, and the game has like a one, two, three process to it. Yeah. Um, but with Spamton, I think what part of it could be is that I don't know if it's entirely just him not caring, but more him being because whenever you if you have the dialogue choice and you choose to say that you're not okay, um, and he kind of pushes you more. I think it's more like a tour guide saying, okay, guys, back to the tour bus. We got to go. We have places to be. We shouldn't be meddling with stuff that isn't a part of the main plot. Mm -hmm. I think he's just... So I don't think his intentions are malicious, more like he just wants us to get... Because, again, he actually says it when we do the training in the fight, is that maybe if you use mercy, we can get a good ending to all of this. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he's necessarily malicious. I just think that he knows we're in a game and he wants us, he's talking to us, the player, because he wants us to get a good ending, ending of some kind in the game mm-hmm. or that he just wants us to have a good experience because it's a video game um, in some way, shape or form. And again, I know that I don't think he's evil because the Snowgrave route is just so morally wrong in every way. And he has no hand in it because now I'm going to talk about the Snowgrave Row. Right. Because there's all of that with Spamton that's there and that's kind of hinting towards, like, again, more suspicion thrown on him. Um, in the Snowgrave Row, uh, at one point, we almost did it tonight, or at least we may have seen a different version of it tonight, but we didn't. Um, there's that part uh, in the normal part of Chapter 2 where, once again, like in the jail cell, he asks you, well, what do you think Susie's doing? Or do you wonder what she's doing right now? Um, and we didn't see it. I don't know if in the normal route, if you just insist that you don't care, uh, if you won't do the whole, like, cutscene thing mm-hmm. um, that you get in the Chapter 1. We don't know because we didn't actually follow through with it because we wanted to make sure we saw the plot. Yeah. But in, cha- in the Snowgrave route, you get to the point again. Things are super rushed um, in the uh, in the Snowgrave route. When you get to the mansion, things go by super fucking fast. Um, hell, I don't even think you do the fucking car thing with the queen in the Snowgrave route because she runs off as soon as you kill Birdly. Mm-hmm. So you don't even do that. Um, um, you skip a bunch of shit. But something um, else I wanted to say about yeah, you the- don't see yeah, you don't oh. see. Sorry, uh, Mitchie. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Just something I wanted to say was um, yeah. something else that's important with the fact that um, each time we've had this moment, which is the thing with Ralsei, is mm-hmm. um, in chapter one, it's in the jail cell where we're like, oh, I wonder what Susie's doing, you know, and then we do that thing with that. No, I know. I'm yeah. I'm probably gonna mention what you're, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, then then go ahead. Well, no, I, you're because you're going to mention that it's always been at moments where we're not doing anything, right? Well, no, that's that's not. Oh, okay. What's going to say? What, well, no. What, right, I gonna, go ahead, well, sorry. no what I was going to say was like that happens in that moment, right? And then we do this. We do the whole Susie thing. Oh, and we learn more yeah. about Susie's character, and then um, it ends up going into how uh, when it happens again in chapter two. You know, Ralsei's insistent about that as well. Each time we pop back, like we the player pop back he's finishing some kind of conversation he's having with Chris that we don't get to see. Mm-hmm. Which presumably he might have been monologuing to Chris. Yeah. Supposedly. Because I'm about to get into the fact that Chris doesn't... We as the player might love Rousey, but Chris does not no, like Rousey. Exactly. No, exactly. Um, yeah. They because not. we're going to get into that whole mm-hmm. spiel. Um, so, uh, fucking... But, but to my whole guide thing... Uh, in the Snowgrave route, whenever you get to the part where Susie goes to talk to Noel and they're doing their stuff off screen and Rousey turns to you like, oh, do you ever wonder what Susie's doing right about now? Obviously, it's super rushed in the Snowgrave route, so it's super like out of like it's just a bit weird writing wise. But we don't even get a choice. We just either us or Chris just refuse to do it. And he gets oddly uncomfortable about it. Like, OK cool and, he's, and then he actually you get to see his internal monologue of like okay maybe i asked too soon let me wait a second and then i'll ask him again um 
But before he actually gets a chance to ask you the second time, Susie bursts out of the room and is done. And unlike before, where he'll just sort of innocently ask, like, oh, what happened or whatever, he, like, almost panics. Like, he's just like, wait, but what, what did you say? Like, what happened? Like, what did, did you say something? And it's like, oh, I just told her it was a dream. Like, and, like, what else? Did anything else happen? Like, he panics, which is, again, very out of his character yeah, no, for he, a lot he, of yeah, this. No, no he, is, he is rightly, like... In the way of like, you're not supposed to say that. That's not. That's not what's supposed to happen here. Yeah. Like you are. So like- because I think again, I don't think he's am not omniscient, but he knows that important things happen, and I think that that means that he might be able to either see or he knows, like at least he knows that we, the player, saw something. So he's panicked because narratively that was bad. Narratively, it's bad that we don't see Susie's scene with Noel because yeah, it's so important. It's really important, especially in really the Snowgrave cute. route. Yeah, and it's really cute. Like it's yeah. like really story um, driven. And in the Snowgrave route, where Noel is having a really bad emotional turmoil, it would be super important. And narratively, any good writer would say that no, you have to see that because that's important. Mm-hmm. But we didn't see it, which nar- which has screwed up the narrative, and which is why I think he panics about it because I think that he is just, he's trying to tell us a story in a sense, not literally, but like he's trying to be the storyteller because also the, both of the times that he asks us to wonder what Susie's doing is always during parts where Susie is doing something important. She's having a big character moment or something important and story driven is happening and we're not doing anything. It's yeah. like when we're trapped in a jail cell and all we have to do is wait for Susie. Yeah. But she's doing something important. Mm-hmm. Or when we're just done with the swan boat ride and she's doing something more important than we are at the moment. Mm-hmm. And we're just waiting for her to get there. Well, it's also and... why it's, it's also the fact that, like, you know, you brought up earlier in, in our playthrough and everything. Literally mm-hmm. every single time you try to make a choice for Susie, up until when Susie gives Chris, like, permission at the end, like, towards the end of chapter one, where Susie's like, all right, Chris, I'll, I'll do what you say, kind of stuff for battles. Susie purposefully does not pick either of the options we are given every time. Mm-hmm. It's not even like she's like, I'm going to go with the exact opposite of the option you picked. It's she picks, like, a third option we didn't even see. Yeah. In every instance. And, um... So, which again is more reinforcement that we are like Chris is our vessel. That's what they were literally called at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but what's important but... with this Snowgrave route? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, well, I was gonna say, um, and something that's important about the Snowgrave route is, um, again, and this isn't a theory. You could find it in the Let's Plays. If you are doing Snowgrave, and for any reason Chris gets knocked down, and you still order Noel to do an attack, literally Noel will get a very special dialogue option. That says that voice is in my head again, and it doesn't sound like Chris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because Chris is because now passed the... out in, yeah. in that sense. So the other thing is that, like, while I don't think that Rousey is a bad actor, I do think that he's like, whatever he wants is very against what Chris wants, which is why I think he, that Chris hates him so much because. Obviously, Rousey's goal is close the dark fountains. Be the hero. Chris's goal, now that we've seen the end of chapter two, is um, is literally open fountains because I think it actually goes back to the whole escapism thing. And I've also, yeah. Julia's brought up some really good stuff and I promise we're going to get there. I just mm-hmm. don't want to completely change topic before I'm done with my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to get back to you, Julie, because you've had some really interesting stuff. Ooh, um, ooh, but but one more thing while you're while you're saying this, yes. I think it's, it is important. It goes with this. Like Pyth just brought up, you know, like uh, and Chris is like for the Snowgrave thing. Chris is watching us force uh, their friend, you know, be evil. Yes. But here's a very important thing. At the very end of the Snowgrave route, if like when it's at the end, it doesn't say you call for help. It says Chris calls for help. Mm-hmm. So literally, it's mm-hmm. like Chris's dying breath screaming for help. It's not. Yeah, us. It- yeah, you you do it a couple of times, and it says uh, you call for help, and then the last thing is Chris, and it's like, oh shit! Well, oh, no, no, <laughs> it's opposite. Remember? Is it? Yeah. No, it's Chris called for Rousey. Chris called for Susie. You whispered Noel's name. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Remember? Yeah. That's right. yeah. yeah. So like, and 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 the thing is, if I remember correctly, like, Rousey and Susie don't like don't show up until a little bit later. Like they try, but they're mm-hmm. not there right away, right? Well, no, they not in Snowgrave. No. That's what I meant. Yeah, not in Snowgrave. That's what I meant. No, they they don't show up until you get to the castle. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And it's, um, yeah, but it's just like, so I do think that uh, while Chris likes Susie, not relating to us, the character, as in literally Chris, the person we're controlling, um, like Susie, I don't think they like Rousey. Even though we're given options mm -hmm. to hug, that's for us, the player, not for Chris. Yeah, because which I feel bad about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't like it. It's like, so I don't think that Chris likes Rousey because I think they have opposite goals. They have opposite intentions. They are antagonists for each other in a sense, which is funny because I do think um, I very much would agree with the ideas that Rousey is probably subconscious in some way or some kind of like imaginary friend even mm -hmm. because, and I'm good, now I'm here's where I get into my whole thing about Rousey quote unquote not existing. Um, because if any of you didn't notice, it's m way more blatant in chapter two. It's kind of subtly there in chapter one as well, but it's way blatant in chapter two. Characters seem to love to just ignore Rousey's presence unless they have to acknowledge oh, him. Constantly. I have, I have another thing that pertains to both Chris not liking Rousey as well as Rousey. Yeah, you're gonna bring resistant. up the tease, aren't you? Yes. So yeah. basically, if you go back to Addison or whatever with Rousey and Susie, and you get the Rousey tea, if you're in battle and you give the Rousey tea to like Susie. She gets like a hundred and something HP because she doesn't fucking yeah. care. Which, but, um, by the way, I, I need to tell people because people probably don't know this. The teas are based on people's relationship with each yes. other. That's really? the whole thing. Oh, I yeah. It says that okay. healing varies oh, because yes. it varies on the person. And that's Not, why, like, so um, just for context for you, Mitchie, because I don't know if you fully saw it. Um, like when we give Susie the Chris T or we give Rousey the Chris T, it's big healing. Yeah. If we give Su like Chris the Susie T, it's big healing. Yeah. Uh, and like Mackenzie said, if we give uh, Susie the Rousey T, um, but it's, keep going. Sorry, I'm just bringing good. that up. It's pretty good healing. But when you give Chris the Rousey T, it's only six HP. But another thing, if you give Noel the Rousey T or try to, she's like. There's nothing in this cup. Really? And she doesn't use Ooh. it. That's yes. Yeah. So I love that. Ooh. And this I isn't me. Si yeah. No, I didn't get a chance to really fuck with it whenever we were doing it because we were kind of on mm. a mission. Yeah. But yeah. So I want to clarify for the chat. My theory, uh, the, my explanation in this is not that Rousey doesn't exist. He does because other characters do acknowledge him. Birdly, like, jokingly calls him Chris's lackey. The queen does acknowledge him, but it's always when either he speaks first or they have to acknowledge him, like he's the only person in the room. Yeah. Some examples of this just off the top of my head, and you can find them littered all throughout chapter two. Uh, when the queen captures... Um, Chris, Susie, and Noelle, and Birdly, and sends him off and stuff like that... It pans to Rousey, and she's like, oh, shit, I forgot about you, or I don't, like, oh, I only had four cages. Well, like, also, just seemed to just completely disregard that he was there. Well, and at the he was end also too, off camera, the, too. At, well, at the end, too, where it's, um, where she's like, oh, yeah, you know, Chris, you do that. Susie, you do that. Noelle, this, and, and you know, uh, whatever, like, she called uh, Birdly. She didn't call him Birdly. Mm -hmm. But, like, uh, as, uh, damn it, I did it again. Rousey was not even, like, on the map. And... Um, but back to the photo thing real quick, um, mm -hmm. when you were talking about how the photo being slightly off of key and everything, um, in our game, we picked the hug Ralsey cause I, I, I like Ralsey, but yeah, you said, you know, Chris doesn't like him, but I, I did see that other people, if you pick the, um, peace sign or the middle finger, Chris turns to the camera and does either of those to while us. Rousey, yeah. to us, the player, while Rousey looks at the camera on the thing and even makes a note of like, ha ha, Chris, the camera was this way. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think both I think both Chris and Rousey know that they're in a video game yeah, in right. some way. Or like Because Chris again and this goes back to like, again, you could say it's just a coding thing, but every time, every single time we finish an action, Chris always turns towards the camera. Yeah. Every single time. Also, um, uh, the only other time, because uh, Julia brought up a good point that's like cute, but also goes back to the Rally thing. Um, yeah, the only time where people outright acknowledged Rousey was that I can think of was when the Swatchlings were like, oh, look at Rousey in his cute little suit. Like, but that was literally because no one else was there. Yeah. And also, again, another example, um, when 
Noel was coming up with her plan on how to solve that big mice puzzle, you know, with the basket and the mice and how to get 20 of them. While Rousey did help Susie with pushing the button, she didn't include him in her plan. Yeah, she didn't mm-hmm. even mention him. Not even a joke of like, oh, well, I don't know what you can do, so just help Susie. It's just not even there. When the queen was saying goodbye to everybody, it was like, oh, goodbye, Burgley. Goodbye, uh, Susie. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, uh, Noel. Not even, like, even though there was a joke about her not having a sincere goodbye for Burgley at the end, for Burgley, I he mean. He was there. Um, he was mentioned. He was, he was still mentioned. Rousey was not mm-hmm. until he spoke up and said, oh, well, we don't have to say goodbye. And so, which you, you could argue maybe it's because he's a darkener. So she felt like he didn't, she didn't need to say goodbye to him. It's just still odd that he is left out of seemingly everything. And then again, when both Noel and Birdly meet you, there was ne- there is never a moment. Like they acknowledge his presence later, like, you know, offhandedly, but there's never any like, who's your friend? Who's that? The only difference is like whenever you watch Susie and Rousey eat cotton candy and she's like, who's that guy? Kind of looks like anyway, off we go yeah. like that. But again, it's because there's only two people there and it's not. Um, but just in while that's one case, there's still so many more where people just seem to kind of ignore his presence for the most part and just kind of leave him out. Yeah. Having said uh, again, that, she even supposedly we thought that she even saw R- Rousey before the whole carnival cotton candy thing because they were on that ride together, the roller coaster mm-hmm. ride. They saw her at the beginning, um, you know, mm-hmm. just to further push that point. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just odd, and which makes me think that like, and it's odd that you know Susie and Chris like very much like acknowledges presence constantly but not really anyone else as much i mean fucking lancer even makes like well, not even piece. in chapter one it's very subtle but like um and this is why i think some people actually theorized why they thought uh rousey was a lightener was because the king just refers to you guys as the lightners yeah. but really he's just talking about chris and Susie mm-hmm. because when rousey actually finally speaks to him directly he says like oh why are you working with them why are you betraying us but, like, why wasn't he acknowledged before that? Why is it only when he finally speaks directly to the king that he actually gets fucking acknowledged? Yeah. It's just a bit odd, is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have before I just I hand the mic off to somebody else. Um, but, like, yeah, I just think there's a very subtle implication that, like, Rousey's just kind of in the back of everyone's minds. He's not really a focus of anyone's yeah. mind as much as he would love to be because he wants friends. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> hi, Holly. Um, hey, Holly, yeah. I'm happy you love the theories. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just a lot. And I just think that, like, I do, I very much agree with the ideas that Rousey could just be, like, a weird subconscious version of Chris or something, and it's just something of a, like, a bit of a rival. And I also think that because I think he's trying very hard to be friendly with Chris and trying very, because again, I think, uh, and we're going to talk about what Julie was talking about because they made up a good point. Um, I'm going to read it in more detail a bit later, but um, they made a point about, uh, or I think it was Julia, but if not, it was somebody. Yeah. Okay. It was Julia making a, a, a mention about how Chris opening these dark worlds is just like unhealthy mech, like coping mechanisms that they keep, going yeah. with which is going to go into uh Mackenzie as the whole escapism topic that no, I want her to talk um, about before that, as well as yeah. Gaster yeah before yeah. that I need to use the bathroom like really bad okay mm-hmm. can I just finish oh, my thought and then it's just for this one yeah go ahead okay but you can go if you want to because yeah, I yeah, think I've already I, talked I already about know this. Your thoughts, um, but you finish a thought I'm just gonna pee yeah so I think that like these are probably unhealthy coping mechanisms because it has to do somewhat with escapism and things and things like that um so this is Chris kind of literally trying to get away from the world and Rousey trying to stop them. So if Rousey is, hypothetically, Chris is subconscious. Rousey might be trying to help Chris, but Chris doesn't really like that he is. Because, um, because again, and also because I've mentioned this kind of briefly, uh, I find it odd that, like, while Susie is, yes, entirely pink, um, both Chris and Rousey have like a main color and a pop of color, but why do they both have the same color? Why does Sc- Rousey's scarf match the pink on Chris's cape? Yeah, it, it's actually uh, so in chapter one, 
uh, it's very mentioned that uh, Susie is very much a purple girl. Her mm -hmm. color is purple. Even in the darker world, she's purple. Uh, yeah. Well, I am led to believe that the cape on Chris's like shoulder is actually red, not pink, because it is the same pink as uh, Ralsei's scarf, but Ralsei's scarf is mentioned as red. Is it? Mm-hmm. When was it mentioned as red? If you go into his inventory, it says red scarf. Okay, I guess I missed that then. I'd have so to go back I, I think I think it is completely different from the pink of Susie because she's totally mentioned as purple. And then Ralsei and Chris have red yeah. accents. I will say that is a, just a little weird of co of a color choice it then. It is. Because, because they do, like, what? because our heart is red. So it's weird that they use yes. a, a very neon pink for the red it, scarf it and cape. It but is strange, but not, that's what it is. <laughs> I guess. I'm I, I take that with a grain of salt. But you know, I just, I that would just be me griping at Toby for color picks. Like, that's it, a weird color is. choice. It is, um, it is. Okay. No, we're just talking about the fact that uh, apparently, I guess I missed this too. Rousey's scarf is supposed to be red. Yes. What? Because yes. in his inventory, it's called a red scarf. What? No, yes. I know. Which is weird because it's not red. Yes. It's pink. Yeah, it's literally and then also, the but, same thing. Yeah. We're Chris. just talking yeah. about that because yeah. um, <laughs> because I was mentioning the fact that like uh, Rousey's scarf matches the pink on Chris's cape. Yeah. And it's weird yeah. to me that there's something so kind of directly matching between them. Yeah, it's literally, um, it's also the which exact leads same me to, value. Yeah. It's not like it's even like Yeah, it dented. leads me to believe that both of those things are red, which yeah. is strange. I don't which know why. Again, that, weird because there's literally, red. like literally we can look on the, to like the stream, there's yes. literally the Delta Rune red heart in there. Yeah, um, exactly. It's strange, heart. but you know, Toby got to do it. Well, Toby maybe, well, here's the thing too. Here's the thing too. Maybe it says red scarf, but he had to pick a pink, literally because. Pro well, I mean, he would blend in with the background. Well, that's what I'm saying. He, well, one. he would blend in with the yeah. background. Also, the heart doesn't have an outline, so if because Chris wears the, you know, the if it is a red scarf, then literally, like, you wouldn't really be able to tell the heart is the heart in the sprite. I guess. Well, in a uh, long story short. They both have yeah. similar accents to each other. Long story short, really all it is. I think and I think that Julie not... bringing up yeah that Chris <laughs> might be unhealthily coping and Rousey could be a like a part of their subconscious trying to help them like trying to be like no stop this like we need like you need to there's better ways to cope you can be a better person yeah um, which is very interesting because I guess this leads into our next yeah about escapism which I got you guys. All right. Yes, so, go ahead. Um, earlier, I, I will get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, you're good. Earlier, I think it was mentioned that each of the places that we're going to be in with the Dark Worlds is going to pertain to different characters, and I'll get to that in a minute. But it's strange, because think about it. Each and every Dark World that we have come across and have yet to come across, because it's hinted in Chapter 3 what it will be next, um... So, which by the way, it is, chapter... it, is, it is hinted pretty heavily that it's going to be a TV themed world. Well, yeah, I'll get to that more in a minute. But in chapter one, you come across when you come back, you seal the a dark fountain and everything. You're in this abandoned classroom full of like game board stuff, cards, yeah. maybe even a jack in the box. Who know really who knows what Jebel is. But anyway, um and even Sean is that little the old toy no. that you find. In chapter two, you're in a computer lab and Susie has mentioned a lot about like playing games in the computer lab and all of that stuff. Those two things board games as well as stuffed animals and cards as well as like computer games video games and such because birdly has also mentioned a lot that he is a gamer um did you, well, just, make, did you just say that you're like a blah, 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 gamer is that what you did <laughs> yes okay i was like <laughs> anyway, is that an audio glitch or did you actually say that no i did that <laughs> okay good well those, good. those two things are forms of escapism Vis yeah. video games as well as board games and toys Another thing is, is that uh, I previously mentioned this in 
chapter one stream, I believe, where I think Toby has changed this, but I believe that Jevil, no, I know that Jevil had dialogue before chapter two ever came out where he mentions Queen. Yeah. He hints at a roaring, actually. He mentioned the roaring as well as um, the knight, as well as Queen. Spampton, when we were talking to him in his little shop and such, he talked about a character named Mike. Yeah. I am led to believe that Mike is our quote-unquote final boss of Chapter 3, which is hilarious because in Chapter 2, at the ending, we get to this little smiling tv that yeah. i'm not gonna lie look kind of looks like the smiling flowey from undertale when yeah. he's on tv but um which is hilarious because i'm going to put it out there right now if this final boss guy is the tv he would be considered mike tv <laughs> for all of you willy wonka fans out there <laughs> well no but here's the thing which, which i i could totally see that but also with the with that being said um, literally Spamton brought up commercials. Yes. Like with Mike and everything. Spamton and, also did that. Yeah. And again, when Susie was talking about the fact that like, you know, like, oh yeah, like we're going to be like into, I, I fully believe. Cause again, television is also an escapism for people. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I am Rich. with my whole tits. Yes. I fully believe <laughs> that, that, um, chapter three is going to be a TV world. The dark world is going to be yes. TV themed. Yeah, um, I want to. Yeah, I want to read because this is relating to the exact topic we're yeah. talking about. I want to read what Julia's comment earlier was. Yeah, I was going to ask um, you to read that because I didn't. About, yeah, it was. I still like to think Chris ripping out the soul and doing the shit they do is them giving into a unhealthy coping mechanisms they develop mm -hmm. to deal with all of the shit they've been dealing with, like their parents' divorce, Asriel going to college, and anything else they could be dealing with in their life. Mm -hmm. Yes, which I think um, is. I think that's pretty like a good. Yeah, because I, yeah. so, I also yeah, think, so, well, if I could, if, if I could. Go you, ahead, go ahead. Because I, 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 I do think this one's quick and it doesn't need too much because, you know, we can probably talk about it like, like more examples later. But we've seen with Chris in chapter one and chapter two that the removal of the soul, it, Chris doesn't act like they're free. Like they act like they're dying. And they clearly like need the soul Adam. back in some way because they're not acting normal. like they need to put it back. They can't just yes. be without it, you know? So that also tells me that it's something where at some point Chris had a soul, but then something happened you to wanna, it. You want to hear a thought that I had because I had this thought while we were like earlier uh -huh, and yeah. I wa I've been waiting to mention it. Yeah. I think I know why there's a save file in the dark world when we first get there. Why? There are only save files when you are in the dark world. I think mm -hmm. Chris has been there before. I think so too. I would be so surprised which I think that they were there. So. Something happened. They lost their soul and we have been sent to replace them and now we are meddling. Ooh. And I think that's almost why Rousey is like petitioned for us to help him. Yeah. Look, uh, as the I, player. I've, I feel like we can get into that a bit later because that's a whole huge thing I have with my gaster theories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, I do want to say though, yeah. uh, Mackenzie, because because you know you know so much more about gaster. When we do get to that topic, I would just like to pop in with my quick thing, and then you can do your big. Yeah, thing. no, that's fine. Because my thing really yeah. is. Um, but anyway, you were saying now with uh, the, the yeah. coping mechanism. That was all I just wanted so, to bring up. So yes. Um. So. I think it's safe to say as of right now, I mean, it could change with later chapters, but I feel like it's a safe thing to say right now that each Darkner world that we're going to come across in each of the chapters is going to revolve around some form of escapism. Yeah. Uh, which leads me to my theories about what could possibly be the other places of interest for the Dark Worlds. So there's seven chapters, and we already gone through the school. Mm -hmm. We already gone through the computer lab, and obviously and we're we about to go Toriel's throughout. House. Yes, Toriel's house, which is also very important because I do agree with Julia that it is some form of like 
it's molded around the characters because I feel like we're going to, if not all of it, we're going to get some form of reason why Toriel is not happy with Asgore because her room is locked up. Yeah. But anyway, that's for another thing. Um, So I think something happened because I don't think, because I've seen that. I definitely, I will debunk this theory. I do not think that Asgore actually killed kids because I've seen people no. be like, that's oh, where they no. got divorced again. I'm like, no, I, uh, I do not think Asgore killed kids. He would be in jail. Like, yeah. he would be in jail. Yeah. Well, also, it's like, I, <laughs> this might be unpopular. I know there's like some stances people have. I don't love the fact that everyone kind of assumes the worst with Asgore all the time. Yeah. Right? Like, I think he might have fucked up in some way. I wouldn't put it past that. But I do think that people have just a bit of this, like, bias against, like, oh, obviously he must have done something <laughs> super fucked up. And it's like, right. but, like yeah, why can't it? I'm like, sorry. Pi- why can't it just Pi- be like. Listen, when your husband murders children, you simply yeah. divorce. <laughs> yeah. And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. But yeah, I think um, that, like, I. I think that people get like a little I I just don't like the assumption that Toriel must be in the right because we all like Toriel more no. than Asgore. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's a bit of a mean way to look at it because a lot of divorces are mutual like a lot of divorces happen because mm-hmm. both people like just don't belong together. Yeah. yeah. For no, one like, reason. Like I believe something happened because Toriel's anger towards Asgore in this world does not make sense. <laughs> I I actually do have some form of theory about that too. Yeah, but, uh, I'm gonna let her tell that through. first. Uh, I want, yeah, I want to get no, through. The, first of all, yeah, Cornex Canor said he had something going on with Rudy. That's why they divorced. <laughs> you know what? I would love I that. Mean, if that I was mean, the thing, listen, I would not be okay that. with okay, that. I wouldn't listen, be mad. Listen, 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 listen. We say that, but even Rudy was saying he had issues with his wife. So I'm yeah. you know? listen, <laughs> listen. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be. But, um, so listen, Toriel's fully in her right to divorce him if he cheated, but also I wouldn't be mad. Like, no. But um, anyway, about the escapism stuff. Yeah. So I have theories about what our other in, uh, places of interest are for these dark worlds. Mm-hmm. So I have a huge, and anybody could debate me on this, I have a huge inkling that Asgore's flower shop is definitely one of the places of interest. I think so, uh, too. The reason why I say that is because gardening can be a form of escapism. That's exactly what he did in Undertale. He yeah. gardened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So that's that's why I also think, unless Asgore is also a prominent character in Chapter 3, that's also why I think mm-hmm. that we're not going to get the full story of what happened um, with Toriel and Asgore, because a lot of like their marriage pictures and a lot of memorabilia about their wedding is in Asgore's shop. Yeah. But, um, so there's Asgore's shop, Yep. There is the church. Oh, I was gonna say, we religion have to have is a the form church. of escapism. They keep, yeah, because the um, church has been locked this whole time. Yeah, no, yes. that's what I think. It has to be the church, and and for the fact that to like everyone in the town, the real I don't think a lot of people like actually because I have literally not seen anybody talk about this. The entire town is really religious. Like, they're subtle about it, but yeah. everybody talks about how they all go to church, they all believe in this thing, holidays are really important. Like, yes. like, like the, the overall church that we can't go to is, like, really important to the entire town. So the, the, the church has to be one. I cannot see why yes. it's not. So, another like, we have two more. I definitely think, without a doubt, that the bunker is at least going to be our last point of interest. I have no idea how to connect it with the escapism or anything. Mm-hmm. That's... I'm pretty sure for future chapters we'll get there, I guess. But I feel like a bunk- the bunker is a huge thing that will probably be last chapter if it is a place of interest. Yeah. But another thing is I think that either the town hall or the holiday residence is another place of interest. That's true, because we haven't seen the house and all we know is all we know where Noelle lives is that she's Chris's neighbor. But apparently well, she, like, lives in, like, the gated biggest house in town. Well, you see, I also think, because since Rudy is in the hospital, I'm pretty sure Noelle's mother is everywhere with, like, uh, in their house or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, work is also a form of escapism. Yeah. 
So like either the her town... mother is working all the time once we're done with school yeah. and mm-hmm. has no time for Noel. Yeah, so I so think, I think I feel that's like also a thing. those two places are either going to be it. Yeah, so. and and again, they've hinted at the carnival way too much. The carnival has to be one at some point. I don't know what it would be, but literally, like, um, well, because no, because in the genocide route, Noel brings up like, oh, like like carnival rides with Chris when they were kids. There's the whole carnival ride with that, and then like in the town, they're talking about the carnival. I feel like it could correlate to one of the places of interest. Yes, I. I don't, like, I guess it depends on, like, where it's held. It could be at the Holiday Residence, for all we know. Because the only reason... That'd be interesting. The only reason I think that, and this could totally be a theory of mine, is I think maybe, like, because, again, carnivals and, like, theme parks are also a form of escapism and, like, you know, like, like, getting away. Like, I can't tell you, and this sounds really bad, but, like... Not me personally, but personally, a lot of my friends have told me stories of, like, when a lot of them have had family problems living in, like, California, a Mm -hmm. lot of families, instead of, like, doing issues, if something bad happened, they would take their kids to Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm. Or, like, Uh they would, like, take them to a place where they're actively doing something instead of, Yeah, my mom literally told me and my brother about uh the fact that my dad and her got divorced i believe we were at the fucking zoo or something see what i mean yeah. no that's what i mean like, like i that's, that's what I'm i remember uh, or at least that's what i think i could be completely wrong no, but, like, but like, that's what i'm like that's actually like pretty like it's a it's an it's not right and therapists are like yeah please don't do that but a lot of people do a lot of people use like yeah. carnivals and th- in fairs well, and i don't stuff. know if it was even at the place i think it could have been afterwards it was more like just trying to have a good day kind of thing and then i had my fucking like totally not in the norm kid response yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> but just but, yeah yes but, definitely um, i think at least those four places are places of interest for sure mm-hmm. um so that's my theories on the escapism part i forget which one we were going into next <laughs> i don't know i just remember we talking about like uh coping mechanisms um yeah. chris being like kind of a fucked up kid a little bit yeah. um yeah. fucking talking about things uh, well i mean um, if, if we can't think of one now I, I i guess we could just go into one of the biggest ones is that i'm the gaster what I one think it is okay okay yeah. so i would like to start my my little personal uh, yeah, theory uh, mine's, mine's really oh, short before, actually wait before, before, oh, actually, before wait. that i want to get a water because my throat is dry oh, yeah. okay uh i'll wait for her to come back because i was gonna say i wanted to read two of the people's comments real quick because it's relating to the talk about okay. this well if she's doing that um, i'm gonna run an ad real quick because like she's just grabbing my okay. water so it'll be like literally a minute yeah. so there we go Blah. but who? <laughs> I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun in the chat. Yeah, we're having theory times. Yeah. Theory time. Also, That's you why. don't have to, but I'm just saying, if you are a sub to me on Twitch, you don't get to see the ads. And if you have Prime, you get one for free. You don't have to. I'm just saying, it would be nice. I'm back. <laughs> All right, uh, we got 40 seconds because I, I ran an ad real quick, so. That's fine. Oh boy, I have I have shit pulled up for this shit. For Ooh, that's actually a good gaster. one. I, I think we could do real quick, but not the gaster one. Uh, yeah. someone wait, real quick, I want to read what some of these comments. Yeah, said, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there I want are two to read comments some, yeah. that kind of are going. That's what I was um, saying. So yeah, we got uh, 23 seconds. So yeah. Also, Julia was mentioning that looks like my guess was right. Audio bu- only bypasses ads. Fuck yeah. Because <laughs> uh, they're on audio only. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, hey, there you go. And that way, I still get paid. <laughs> cough listen <laughs> just saying just saying um <laughs> all right uh and yeah, okay. i want to read two of the good. things yeah go ahead read the, okay. read the yeah. comments um all right so uh first there was where is it um okay so there's three comments actually they're both neon origami and julia mm-hmm. uh neon said bunkers may be the last one because some bunkers can only be opened from the inside Julia said, what if the bunker isn't the entrance to the final dark world, but the exit? I don't know. Kind of Ooh. thinking out of my ass here. That could be good. Um, I also I like that. I, I like what um, Corner X uh, Cannon also said was like, 
you know, if the bunker has to do with escapism, it could be, you know, kids exploring spooky places, which is something yeah. I Neil, did. Neil, Neil also mentioned maybe the bunker represents Chris wants to actually open up and accept healthy, healthy coping Oh, mechanisms, that could be good. Yeah, that could be good. Which could be interesting. Uh-huh. Which I think now that having that kind of, I love that Julie actually even brought up the coping mechanism thing because yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that would be make for a very fascinating plot or like overarching yeah. story to this is this being about like chris coping with things oh i could totally oh, see God. that because and like that would and that helps my whole rousey theory about him like wanting to help but chris is like fuck you <laughs> like, yeah 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 so all let right. me have my really bad escapism like yeah just, you know let me have my pretty much it comes down to let me have my vice yes so mm-hmm. all right yeah now, all right go ahead i'm gonna do my quick gaster thing because again i'm not toby i don't work for the team i this can totally be fake but none before, of us do. <laughs> before before we get into the big gaster because mackenzie's the gaster like slut she knows everything about it so yes. what i wanted to say was <laughs> i personally think while toby is an amazing writer and a great game designer i do not think originally and i mean og originally same with underhill because in the original patch of undertale Gaster was more just like a hidden asset. Like, to, to do the thing to get Gaster was added in an update. It was a pretty early update. So I originally think that Gaster originally, originally, OG Undertale days, was like a thought that just didn't get done and then was something like, mm. uh, I'm just gonna, as a game designer, I'm just gonna hide it in the code because if you guys are into video game design and stuff like that, I know you two are, but I'm talking to people in general. That's yeah. actually no, really common to just hide like stuff that's never used in games. It's really common. Um, so that's what I personally think. But then I think that because of like the theories and stuff getting big, then Toby did more with Gaster. And then it came along with the, well, I have this like idea. I could do something with it. Cause originally with chapter one, I wasn't really for the Gaster theory, but now with the stuff in chapter two and more things being hinted at and more things coalighting with it, because something I wanted to bring up, because I don't know if you knew this, Mackenzie, but as like a weird little thing in Undertale, when you, there's a random phone call you can do if you call out in a yeah. certain area. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Have that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you can bring that up then when you have your thing. But anyway, um, that's all I wanted to say is I. Well, I you think... can, you can talk about it. I okay. don't mind. Oh, okay. Go well, ahead. then, um. So tag you know, team, tag the, team. Yeah, the whole thing yeah. with the uh, Spanton is the the phones and everything. So in Undertale, you get a cell phone, and again, this is Undertale, not Deltarune. And um, yes. there's a random chance phone call you can get in a very specific area, where a person is like, "Hello, hello. Oh, is this like G or something?" Like they start to say something, and they're like, "Ho, oh, ha, ha," and it's like a nervous laughter. And it's like, "Oh, must be a wrong number," and that's it. Yeah. And a lot of people now theorize that they think that could be a thing where it's like that was actually like Spampton calling. Because the whole thing with Dark World that has been proven is even though the Dark Worlds are finger quote new when they're like getting like opened or Dark Fountains, in a weird way they've been around for a long time. Because like the Spampton thing is implied for like uh, 1997 or something, right? Like whatever his was. Mm-hmm. right and then like yeah. well, same with like um uh king and lancer is even though the dark world is new that world itself was around for a long time so it like messes with things so it's like while the world itself only existed recently in its time pocket it's existed for a long time and with the gaster thing is a lot of people say he was uh like um spread around like time and space right Mackenzie yes so mm-hmm. that that was my little thing my thought there was originally it was a thing where it's like originally Gaster was just a neat thing didn't get to do anything with and then Toby was right. like okay but like what if I have this guy <laughs> like yeah so I I think a good point is to probably start with Undertow because I see that Pyth doesn't really under like know a lot about gaster which don't like that's yeah yeah. quite a few people don't so let me start from the beginning so in undertale uh there's this there's the there's this thing called like a your fun uh value or whatever and uh if you have a fun value of some certain like numbers or whatever you can get random encounters like what mitchy was talking about with the random phone call being like 
uh, maybe possibly Spamton being yeah. like, oh, wrong number. Oops. Yeah. Um, but there was also stuff like the, that. the ferryman. There was, well, that's different. Um, oh. you That's just random. That's not with fun value. Oh, yeah, the okay. ferry, the, the river person or ferryman, uh, if you go through like the fast travel or whatever with them, they say certain things and a couple of them are like uh beware the man from another world from the other world and then another one of them is beware of the man who speaks in hands yeah so and... if you don't know about gaster his full name is wd gaster or wingding gaster yeah, if you know the wingding font it's mostly in hands or whatever yeah, cuz the the thing too is um it's and it's it's i didn't realize this until someone pointed out but it's really important with the skeleton people because mm -hmm. gaster's official sprite that is in the game this isn't fan like you can find the sprite no, you can you can he's, look it up yeah. he's 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 a skeleton he's a skeleton yeah like, he, he at least looks like a skeleton yeah he at least yeah. looks like a skeleton and the hint with the skeletons is you know we have sans who talks in comic sans and we have papyrus, papyrus. who talks in papyrus font like they both are do that yes. and so um with wd gaster though if you ever it's it's a really old thing because like <laughs> i hate saying old but not a lot of people use <laughs> microsoft word anymore because google from what i know google docs doesn't even have windings but literally windings no. if you mm -hmm. type out the letters like like wasd all that stuff it is literally just symbols and a lot of them are like hand signs and stuff yes so that's that's, so, that's what's really important with yeah. the whole guy who speaks with hands being a windings guy so mm -hmm. I guess I guess the a great part of it would be like to talk about Gaster's backstory yeah. before every the events of Undertale. So Gaster was the original royal scientist before Alphys ever came along. He is supposedly the person that created the core. Um, that's why a lot of monsters, I believe, in Undertale say that they don't really know how it was created or how, what, what, basically stuff like that. And there, I'll get to that too in a minute. But apparently, there was one day um, where Gaster. Okay, let me get to this. Sorry, I. It's kind of complicated, kind of not type of thing. So sorry. Um, so you meet these these characters in Undertale, depending on your fun value, and they're called Gaster Followers. Um, if you have watched our stream, like we just recently, like stop, like we, we did today. Sorry. Um, if you and uh, Mitchy remember Morgan uh, in the diner with Caddy, the little orange guy that you voiced, Morgan. Mm -hmm. That was sitting at the booth. He's one of the followers. Mm -hmm. He's one of the followers. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a follower. And... The dude in the library was one, wasn't he? Yes. The dude in the library that's upstairs and is like, I like the books here, especially yeah. upstairs. He was one of the followers, as well as one of the people that was in the car. Like, yeah, there's the, the, two the, the, versions the, the, the of The them. distressed guy. The distressed guy yes. in the car. Um, there's two versions of him in Undertale. One is the Gaster follower, where he has no eyes, and he's holding a face that talks to you. Uh, the other one is basically him with the face, with the donut, because I believe he is at Muffet's Bake Cell. Yeah, I think um, so, because I think he says something like... the Gaster like... follower, yeah, is in Hotland. Sorry. Oh no, I was, oh, no, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, I think the guy who... Um, out of character real quick. Honey, can you get me a slice of American cheese? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, important theory. Thank it's, you. Mitchie. I know. I'm sorry. Thank you. Fascinating. But, no, my husband just came home. He's be, trying to be sneaky, and I looked at my burger, no, and good. my burger is very lacking cheese. So anyway, you're all good. Uh, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> with the bake sale, I know this one for a, a fact because I always thought it was funny in my uh, terrible humor way. Was because he's like holding a donut, and he's like, "I spent my entire life savings on this donut," and he's like having a crisis about it. So that's there's there's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm basically going to read their dialogues because it's important. Yeah, sure. One go ahead. of the Gaster followers, uh, the the little orange guy that was in that booth, 
that gastro follower says, it makes sense why Asgore took so long to hire a new scientist. After all, the old one, Dr. Gaster, what an act to follow. They say he created the core. However, his life was cut short. One day he fell into his creation and, will Aphis end up the same way? Um, and then Gaster follower number two, which is the panicky guy with the, you know what I'm talking about. Um, he says, Alphys might work faster, but the old royal scientist, Dr. W.D. Gaster, one day he vanished without a trace. They say he scattered across time and space. Ha <laughs> ha, how can I say so without fear? I'm holding a piece of him right here, which is strange. I'm guessing is talking about the face, but it's fine, whatever. Um... I mean, that's the thing, too. The, when thing. you, it, you know, again, to f encounter the followers, they're supposed to be creepy and unsettling because they're also. Oh, yes. They are very. They're fucking also. Creepy. It's weird because. They're literally. They're monochromatic. Yeah, sorry. They're monochromatic. Yeah, they're grayed out sprites of the actual monsters. Mm -hmm. It's fucking creepy. But Gaster follower number three, which is the guy that you see in the library uh, upstairs and talking about how he loves the books, says. I understand why Asgore waited so long to hire a new science, a new royal scientist. The previous one, Do uh, Dr. Gaster, his brilliance was irreplaceable. However, his life was cut short. One day his experiments got, went wrong and, well, I needn't gossip. After all, it's rude to talk about someone who's listening. Uh, which implies that Gaster has been following you since the beginning of Undertale. Mm. So it's very strange and such about the Gaster followers. But there's also another one, which I'm not going to uh, get too much into. There's also a lost kid, which is basically the, really the same sprite as kid? the monster. Yeah. Yes, as the monster kid who also said, well, maybe I should pull that up. Hold on. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything so that people understand. Uh, Lost Monster Kid dialogue, please. Sorry. <laughs> uh, is it here? Well, I know there's also one. If you were thinking of one, there's one where um, uh, when you're walking in the grass, I think in Undertale or something, mm -hmm. like someone talks, like is talking to you, and they say something like, "Oh yeah, it's like really." I, I could be wrong with the placement, but I know there's something where somebody talks to you. It's like, oh, it's really rude to like talk about someone who's standing right behind you and no one's there. Oh yeah. It's like I know I didn't make up that dialogue. I don't remember where it's, but that's definitely an Undertale, and like literally no one is there. I don't. Yeah, I don't really quite remember like what uh, the mo lost monster kid says because I can't find it. I can't find the dialogue, but. Basically, the premise of that dialogue is basically just saying, like, uh, talking about how he doesn't exist in this world anymore and has to watch the world time and time again, with, like, without people knowing that he exists. Um, not W.D. Gaster, but just the lost monster kid in general, yeah. which also gives us inklings that all of the Gaster followers, as well as Gaster himself just don't exist in the minds of anybody anymore, which makes sense due to the fact that Alphys or nobody really talks about him. Yeah. Or mentions him. Um, or they don't even know how the core just became to be. Yeah. Um, like, they know so, it was made, but yeah. they for like, it's, it's a weird thing, because, like, it's not implied if people just forgot in some yes. weird way, or if they just don't talk about it, but there are some people in Undertale when you talk about the core... They're like, oh yeah, it was built, and like that's just kind of it. Like they don't like yeah. they don't go into detail about like you know that's that's weird. They don't like even that. yeah they don't even talk about how Alphys replaced someone yeah. either. She's if, in their minds she's always been the royal scientist. Yeah. Um, but so also if your fun value is at a certain point, you can actually interact. Like you can actually see gaster at some point yeah there is a point um, where you can find him in the game if you like like mechanics yes if you're fun. but if i remember correctly after you find him doesn't the game crash it doesn't crash he just disappears and if you go out of the room that room doesn't exist anymore oh okay 
I thought the game yeah. crashed. Uh, I don't know why. I did. No. Um, that's if you no. That's if you put Gaster's name as the fallen human. It crashes, oh, okay. or no, it just resets it and go, yeah. puts you back at but the beginning, which also happens with Delta Rune as well. Yeah, something that happens mm-hmm. though that's important when you go when you find Gaster in the weird room. Literally, he just kind of looks up and then vanishes. Like, he's surprised you, yeah. fa- you found him. Right. Um, so, that also leads me to one of the m- most important things, which I feel like can directly be uh, compared to Delta Rune, and that is an entry number 17. If any of y'all have not heard about that, it's basically if you play with... The I don't know if it's like the fun value. It's either the code or the fun value. Well, the fun value is in the code, so you might have to mess with that or whatever. But you, if you do something in Undertale's code, you can open the game and find this entry number seventeen, which was supposedly supposed to be in the true lab in Undertale. And it's completely in Wingdings, which is obviously a direct reference to Gaster. And it reads as follows. Entry number 17. Dark, darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps growing. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative, which I did look that up. Photon is just light. If you you are a... A, a dummy like me but anyway <laughs> thank you because i always wondered what that was but no. i never googled uh, it so i didn't know it's it was light. light uh photon readings negative this next experiment seems very very interesting what do you two think so there's a lot of like dialogue in delta rune that pertains to entry number 17 mm-hmm. uh and we can talk about the theories of like who those two people he's referring to is. We can get into that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a lot of dialogue that pertains to this entry number 17. At the beginning of Delta Rune, when you're in this weird like state and it's talking about vessels and you're choosing your vessel and stuff and you choose the name for it, the dialogue always is like very very interesting or very very wonderful or stuff like that just weird little notes of like sprinkled dialogue everywhere another one of these things is shams dialogue when you are talking about jevil um so uh he even sham says something about this too he was a f- this is talking about jevil sham is talking about jevil he was a funny little man, once the court jester, I, the court magician, a friend. I could, could I consider him a friend? Perhaps, perhaps not. But he was the only one who matched me in the games we used to play. One day, he met a strange someone, and since then, he began to change. He started saying bizarre things that didn't completely make sense, but didn't completely not make sense either. He soon began. He soon began to see the world as a game and everyone as its participant. As the court mage and his only companion, I was forced to lock him away, or rather, lock us all away. In his own words, since that time, the strange words he said have stuck with my co- inside my cotton, and my view of this world has become darker yet darker. Reflecting on these old memories, I think perhaps I miss playing games with him, and I wonder if I hadn't if I hadn't been asked to lock him up, would I have found a little more purpose in my life? This is also really important because it's the same thing with Spampton, where he was a normal guy down on his luck, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden mm-hmm. he got a phone call one day, and everything changed. Mm-hmm. But when the Addison went to the phone, it was garbage noise. Mm-hmm. Another thing about that garbage noise, though, is if you do come across this entry number 17, you hear that same garbage noise all the way through that entry when you are reading it in Undertale. Which leads me to believe that that 
pertain like that's a reference to Gaster. Now don't quote me on this, but um you can look it up or whatnot, fact check me, but I believe that if you go to the bunker and you sit there for a minute, the music starts getting louder and louder. And if you mess with that audio or whatever, um I believe it's that same garbage noise. Just slow down and at a different pitch. Which leads me to believe that something with these dark worlds has something to do with Gaster. Yeah. And, again, I also originally didn't think that until the more recent events with Chapter 2 and stuff. Plus, something I um, would like to get into for a second is something I thought that was really interesting is... So it's not really a theory I have, but it's just something I've noticed, is that both Sans and Papyrus in Undertale and Deltarune just show up. Like the town yes. people have talked about in both games, they just They're show new. up. Like one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just it. They just both... Which is funny because that's the same thing that is happening in Deltarune. Yeah. They're new to town. Yeah. Well, they weren't new in Undertale. They had been there for a while. Because remember, like, Papyrus and Undyne are, like, really good friends. But when people well, yeah. talk well, about... Well, yeah, what like, I'm saying they... is that they just showed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Eating food again while I'm recording this. Really bad. But yeah. Streaming. But, yeah, so, like, a lot of people theorize that... Because another big thing is literally the name of San's attack in the... Um, genocide route there like his main thing is called a gaster blaster like in the game code it's what yes. they're called also another thing to mention the determination extractor looks exactly like a, a gaster blaster by the way yeah which is interesting because office messed with all of yeah. that stuff oh, too. Oh, oh but you didn't mention the uh the photo D or did you mention the photo oh um that's another thing with sans though um hold on um holding is held. holding is held holding so hard by the way i found a cursed image that i want to share with you but it's actually really good for an art and i like it oh <laughs> shit okay hold on <laughs> uh i think dreama is in the chat <laughs> oh, um, oh um yeah hi dreama i don't know you but i've heard of you um yeah she is cornix canner um oh something hi. you've been here the whole time yeah, yeah hi. she said she said something i'd like to mention is in both chapters of delta room you can come across a room between rooms and collect an egg from a man smiling at you behind a tree if you translate egg to windies it translates to a hand pointing left or e then two hands pointing up, G, uh, the movement of the night piece in chess. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, I totally huh. forgot. Thank you, no. I totally mm -hmm. forgot about that. After, in Adulterun Chapter 2, because you can do it in Chapter 1, in Chapter 2, um, after you do the stuff to, I think, get too spamped in, like, a special pathway opens, another pathway we can't see, and out of nowhere, there's one of those red trees, and you go up to the tree, and there's a person there you can't see, and they give you an egg. And then when you and then when you turn back mm. around, the tree's gone, and the thing's gone. Like I've seen huh. because I saw it. Huh. I saw it in Jack Septic's Let's Play. I didn't oh, know so about crazy. that. I totally forgot. I to heard about it. an yeah. egg from Dreama, but I didn't know it was that deep. Okay, well then oh there you gosh. go. I, again, this is why I think yeah. Gaster is so prevalent yeah. to no, Delta but that's, Rune. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm thinking I Toby is a great writer, is an amazing guy, but I don't think he's like some people are like he had Delta Rune when he was writing under I'm like, no. I do not think that no. of, I do not think no, that in the I, heartbeat. I also think because I, I will say <laughs> this is a little bit subjective, but like I'm just speaking I'm speaking purely from my own experience mm -hmm. writing stuff i know i'm not anywhere near the toby level of like i've actually produced things right but <laughs> i'm gonna tell you guys from experience while a lot of this could be connected and actually make sense connected together and things like that i promise you 50 percent of this was either not planned originally by toby oh, or we're just yeah, no. stumbling across stuff that makes sense even no, if we're right yeah. Yeah. we might have not like he might have not intended for us do, to be right. No, that's what so, I, that's what I think. I, like I said, I think it's yeah. a thing where it's like 
Toby's like, you know, I got this. I had this thing. This thing is already here. Why don't I just yeah. polish no, it? No, I've had it um because I've had it happen a lot in my own writing process where I'll realize like, oh shit, I foreshadowed this the whole time and yeah. I didn't even realize it. No, I got like, it too. It's really yeah. common. I I feel like I don't think unless I'm totally wrong and we see in future chapters. I don't think that Gaster is like the big bad evil guy that we're going to fight at the end. Yeah, unless I don't either. something I don't, I, Jurassic I, changes, but I do yeah. think Gaster is pushing this plot forward. Yeah, yeah. I do think he's and like is the reason he is the why puppet master, Desiree, so to speak. Is, yeah, is another yeah, reason for here. that. Which I will say, here's what I'm going to say, like hypothetically. There's five chapters left. I don't yeah. know mm-hmm. entirely how Toby plans to write things. Here's my thing. I think a. The only reason I'd be disappointed with him being a final boss at the moment yeah. is only because he is not established well. You exactly. have to find this information by going leaps and bounds. It would be really shitty to pull out this final boss at the very end that you would only figure out if you were making sure you were looking at, like, Everything. every little nook and cranny, yeah. cranny, which is unfair to people who just want to play the game, Yeah, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, no. But also, what I do think, though, is that, because here's the thing. The way we're being set up right now, regardless of what Toby intended originally, whether regardless if chapter one only had one ending and yada, 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 um, which textually wasn't completely true either. Um, but the way it is now, you can do these weird routes and you can collect shadow crystals by fighting mm-hmm. secret bosses. But also you can't technically do both as far as I've seen. Yeah. Because if you do the weird route, if you do Snowgrave in mm-hmm. Chapter 2, you, you don't can't fight, fight Spampton. Spampton the typical way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you'd even... Maybe you do get a Shadow Crystal, and I just don't know. Well, but, I don't um, know either, so... <laughs> yeah. But, like, maybe you do. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. Mm-hmm. But I do think that, obviously, if you do all the weird routes or you do whatever nonsense you have to do with um, that then I think that that would probably lead you to a certain type of ending or a different kind of way the plot goes. But I think if you collect... I wouldn't put it past if you collect all the shadow crystals if that's how you would fight Gaster as a final boss. I can because it would that. open up more lore, yeah. potentially. But that's, oh, that's just a, a thought. I don't know how he t- intends mm-hmm. to write the series. Um, also, I wanted to point so yeah. out that Dreama brought up, yeah, it's only accessible after Toby kills you with the car. Ah, okay. What is Interesting. The, the When you find the tree on the hidden path in chapter two. Oh, yeah, it's okay. a special pathway ah. that unlocks only after Toby kills you with the car. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Toby. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, interesting, cause I, interesting, cause interesting. I was watching um, Jack play it because he, he finished it. And literally, like, I was like, we didn't find this tree. What the heck is this? Oh, damn. And even he was like, so he was like, oh, great. I have an egg. Thanks, random guy. Because he clearly did. Like, like, oh, I oh, thanks. I guess. I'm right sorry. I just I thought of something. Yeah. What if? What if Timmy is also meta? I <laughs> hope so. I, I could only dream that Timmy is meta. <laughs> oh, Timmy! I would love that. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, I think it'd be funny because Timmy is based off of one of like his coders. The yeah, yeah. Also, um, we didn't no, bring no, up funny. the fact that like <laughs> there is there is canonically a character in the code in the game. I found yeah. this out and then I looked into it myself. There is a character. That realizes they are someone stuck in the code no one knows as it is in both Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Oh, that's probably Jevil and Spamton, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in the code for Chapter 2, they're, like, panicking, apparently. Whoever because this character I, I is do, that's stuck in the yeah. code. Yeah, I do want to, again, mention that Spamton mm-hmm. and Jevil both came across something strange, and they completely broke. Yeah. Or... In other words, became meta as fuck. Yeah, like like uh, Dreamer um, said, they're literally asking for help to get broken out of the code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also want to mention because this was Holly mentioned this earlier, mm-hmm. um, but because uh, I think it'd be interesting to bring up, uh, Sans has the portal under the door smoke, uh, mm-hmm. as like referring to Undertale, I believe. I think it's implied he's multidimensional, which yeah, I yes. I think we all agree with. Oh with yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I it's literally the same door. Dive. I'm about to deep dive into Sans. That's why I'm All like right, let's waiting go for it. yeah. The, I'm the, just I, the if hardest. y'all have any other things to say, you, say it now. I don't know if Mitchie does. I need to get water though. So you okay. you, go, you go. We can yeah, you get my wawa and I'll come back. Go get your wawa. Yeah. And while he's gone, we will get ready to talk about Sans. 
the Ooh, largest we, Tumblr sexy man that I still do not understand uh, why. No, please, please stop. <laughs> no, we're not going back to that. We, no, no. Leave that out of the theories. No. It's not a theory. It's not oh, a theory if it's a fact. I don't want it to be. I don't either. I don't <laughs> understand it. Why are you reminding me? <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Thank you for typing that in chat. Uh, <laughs> Sans fans girls scare me. <laughs> Fuck that. Tumblr sexy men scare me. Oh my god. In general. What did back to? No, so uh, earlier uh, in the stream. Uh, Mitchie, that's what you can... quick, yeah. Wait, real quick. Uh, sorry, this is important. Uh, Mackenzie, no, do you need water tonight? Because I just took the last water. Uh, no, I, I'm i good. Uh, okay. I can I get have, some tomorrow. Yeah, I have mini waters in my car, so I'll just need to bring those up tomorrow. Ooh, if you have... Oh, well, we're having people over. Shit. Okay. I'll just... I'll we just get to, get... We're going to have a time before they come, because we Ooh. get off of school. Well, yeah, early. I'm thinking because I also ordered groceries that I'm going to pick up on Sunday, uh -huh. and that also contains water. Okay, well, I have mini waters, so I'll be fine. Like, we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah um, okay. I literally got I mean, them today because I didn't I mean, want to get a whole thing of Worst case scenario, do you guys have a gas station you can get, like, just a, we're, a we, gallon We can literally from? walk to Rouse's. Oh, yeah. well, that's what I mean. Okay. It's I'm just, there. no, it's only hard because getting on a water in an event because we get those giant packages yeah. of water bottles that take, and we live on the third floor. No, like, yeah. actually, no, 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 what I'm saying is if you're all out of water, what's stopping you from tomorrow getting, like, a gallon of water while you wait to get groceries on yeah. Sunday? Oh, uh, yeah. Neon Origami, before we get into the other things that we were talking mm -hmm. about, um... Uh, the bunker was locked. Both yeah. in both chapters, it's when you look on the door, it says it's locked. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. We weren't ignoring you. We were just in the zone. Yeah, sorry. sorry. We were talking about waters. <laughs> Stay hydrated, guys. Anyway. Thank you, Wawa. So. Everyone hydrate or dihydrate. You listening now, if, even if it's in the future on YouTube, you do it. You drink your Wawa. You, you hydrate before we dive deep into sand's... Fucking bone meal. I don't know. I I hate that <laughs> sentence. Bone anyway, meal? Wow, I'm sorry. Yeah. Bone meal. Before hold I on. Thought of, look, I thought before of we get Skyrim. into Sans bone meal. <laughs> look, I just thought of Skyrim, and they have like fucking bone meal in their droggers shit. It's like, like yeah, a but those fucking... are droggers. I, don't eat the droggers. See, see, bone marrow might make sense, but that it... bone meal. Fine. I'm anyway, question. Yeah, do you want to go to the bone zone? Let's go to the part where I die. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, okay. So essentially, and this is a hilarious way to get here, but um, in Undertale, when you get to you have, I believe you have to do this with either neutral, neutral or pacifist only routes, because I, you cannot get this through genocide. Sans is going to kill you. But um, once you get to the judgment room, uh, you can talk. You have to save before you go to talk to Sans. Once you talk to Sans, you go out of the game, and then go back into there and talk to Sans again, and he'll be like, oh. You look like you seem like you've already heard all of this. Okay, since I know you can do this now, even though he probably knew that we could do that in the first place. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's like, okay, I'll give you a password. So if you do what you just did all over again and tell me this password, I'll I'll give you secrets and shit. So you do that a couple of times because he gives you stupid passwords and shit, and then he finally gives you the correct password. And he gives you a key to his bedroom. Yeah, because his, his bedroom in the main game of Undertale is locked. Yes, is locked. You can't get it any other way. So you get the key, you go to his room, and there's not really anything too special in there. It's, it's about jokey. what you would it, it think. Sans, yeah, yeah. You, you, it's about what you'd think <sighs> Sans' room would be. But there's this one part of his room that contains another key, and it's to Sans' workshop. If you go outside of their house and go behind their house and press A or whatever, it'll be like it's unlo it, you unlocked whatever it was. And then you enter Sans's workshop. And so once you get into Sans's workshop, it's pretty small. There's about like four drawers. There's a counter with some blueprints on there, as well as something that's covered up with a sheet or whatever. Yeah, it's clearly a and, thing, whatever it is. Like yeah. 
So I'm just going to give you guys the full description because I have it. Mm -hmm. At the bottom right corner of the room, there is a strange covered up machine that seems to be broken. The workshop has four drawers, but the protagonist cannot interact with the rightmost two. In an attempt to do so, they interact with the blueprints on the shelf just above the drawers. The blueprints are described as being of a machine and written in unreadable symbols. A lot of people like to argue that this is Alphys's scratch handwriting, but I don't believe it is because it says unreadable symbols, which would be wingdings. Would be wingdings. Because yeah, again, again, um, just literally look up like Google wingdings font. You cannot read wingdings. It's not no, way. and they're symbols. <laughs> they're complete symbols that you cannot read um, without doing a translator type thing. But um. And then the second drawer from the left contains a badge. The f I no, it has no further uh, description about the badge. So there's a badge. That's cool. Uh, the first drawer's contents contains dep uh, change depending on some of the player's previous actions. It always contains a photo album with photos of Happy Sands along with many other people. The protagonist. Briss does not recognize. After Azrael's battle, another photo shows up with the protagonist, Sans, and all of the protagonist's friends. Finally, uh, only after... Oh, shit, I didn't... Okay, hold on. Fucking get the fucking thing. Hold on. Do -do. Hold God, on McKenzie. again. God, Sit McKenzie, tight. how dare we you? I'm sorry. We're the doing suspense. this. Suspense. I can't I know. deal with it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. If, after Ezreal's battle, finally, only after the patch that Toby put in, um. Uh, and after talking to the with the clam girl and learning of Susie S U Z Y, a card sticking out from the back flap of the binder appears described as a poorly drawn picture of three smiling people with the words don't forget written in lowercase so let me talk about clam girl real quick so basically there is if you have the oh it's goner kid fucking i found you anyway <laughs> <laughs> So basically, uh, we actually found this with a couple of our friends last Saturday, and this person's name is called Glam a Clam Girl. I believe this also has something to do with your fun value. Yeah, fun value is between 8 and 89, and the player is not on a genocide route. Basically, you go into... Um, you go into, like, that area with the save right before, like, Napster Blooks and Undyne's house. And if you go, uh, go out and come back in, Clam Girl will appear and basically talk about how, um, oh, she has a neighbor. She, uh, Frisk reminds her of her neighbor's uh, kid and they should, she should be around our age and all of that. And she talks about how her name is Susie, S-U-Z-Y, um, which is interesting because we know a Susie, not in that actual like spelling of the name, but we have it. But uh, she also talks about how we might, that Susie might be the reason why we're here in the first place. Whether she's talking about Undertale or just in general is unknown. But a lot of people speculate Susie is the reason why we're here in Undertale in the first place. Um, so with Sans having all of that information about like the whole uh, card with the three people smiling, which I assume to be at least Chris and Susie and some other person, um, with the words don't forget, which if people forgot, haha. Is the name of the song in the end credits in Delta Room? Well, it's also um, funny because it's three people smiling. It literally could be Susie, Chris, and Rosie. Yeah, uh, it just—I—I I feel like that could be it, but who knows? Um, so it could just be three of them. Uh, of course, they are drawn, so it could be 
just maybe Chris drew on a card and gave it to Sans, or Sans drew it, whatever, who knows. But it's only, it's interesting because it's only after you talk to Clam Girl and go back into Sans's workshop do you find that card. Um, but yeah, Sans is also sus as fuck. <laughs> yeah, <and laughs> Who would have thought? And something I want to bring up real quick because people have been talking about in the chat for a minute. We've been talking about this, and it yeah. is, I'll be quick. And we can go back to talk. Yeah, about sorry. It. I I know I've been talking. No, about no, it. it's no, it's good. It's interesting. I've just been listening. That's what we're here thing. for. Yeah, yeah, it's why we're here for. It's why people clicked on it. But no, yeah. um, literally, what I was trying to say was um, something that someone was bringing up was they were bringing up how um, you know, like. And I brought the, sorry, I am now gassy. I ate too fast. My bad. But bringing up how Chris is like the only human in the entire monster town. So yeah. I've seen people theorize that they're like, Delta Rune is a prequel. I'm like, no, it's, I do not believe that whatsoever. I think it's no. an AU. And I Toby think, even debunked that. Yeah. I so. think, I think it's an mm. AU where literally we live in a world where the monster human war never existed. That's what I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense like at all yeah. chronologically. And yeah. also it it's also just like, it also you know. doesn't make sense in my mind for it to be a thing where it's like, Oh yeah. The, cause I've seen the thing where it's like, Oh, it's in a world where the monsters won the war. And yeah. I'm like, I don't think that either because I feel like everyone would be really weird at but Chris that, being a human in that case. Yeah, and that would also, like, again, that also doesn't make sense with what we were established yeah. with the monsters right. versus the humans in no, the exactly. war. No, exactly. So that's what but I'm like, saying. So that's what I'm, I think Delta Rune is an yeah. AU. Where, I do want to say, yeah. yeah, well, I want to say on that subject as well, another thing they were talking about with chat that I think is kind of piquing my interest a little bit. Uh -huh. Someone suggested the idea of what if uh, Asgore and Toriel found Chris either in the bunker or near the bunker? I think that That'd could be, be interesting. Very cool. Yeah, no, I, 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 we saw your comments. You weren't ignoring it because I was thinking that too. I'm like, that could be really interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of poetic because I think Dreamo was the one. Yeah, Dreamo was the one who brought up the fact that like y'all in the chat talking about it is making me consider some stuff. Maybe Chris did come from the bunker and like life with monsters started by them coming up, whereas in Undertale the kids fell down. Yeah. What if humans were locked underground this time that'd be messed up yeah that could, so be, it could be very interesting which would be very um, interesting if that's the case also, which would also imply again. i will i will have to like mention sorry mitchy that's um fine. i will have to mention literally at the end of chapter two something happened with chris in the bunker uh mm -hmm. snow drake and monster kid mentioned something about chris yeah. and the bunker well, it's also a, which it's is very like, uh, well, and also, uh, again, this is kind of self for you. Bunkers are dark. Yes. Uh huh. You know? Oh, no. So, I think someone even put, like, said this way, way earlier. Oh, no. I we think were talking so about the creating the dark worlds is that maybe stabbing the ground is releasing the darkness from the bunker underground. Yeah. yeah. No, that I could totally so, be it. Which I like because, that well, idea. Something, well, something else, too, that, like, could go along with the, because I, I do agree with the idea that they just found Chris is the fact that. If they were to just adopt a human, which doesn't seem out of character for Toriel or Asgore, no. is the fact that I don't know why she would go to a library and look at a book constantly instead of just owning right. the book in her house. Mm -hmm. Unless it's something like, oh, crap, this kind of just happened or we just found this kid. It could also imply the whole thing, too, with the fact that like a lot of people don't, you know, they haven't brought up but I think is interesting is not just in chat, but I haven't seen people in theories talk about this, but Asgore and Toriel are boss monsters, and so is yes. Asriel. And in the lore of Undertale and Deltarune, boss monsters age differently than humans mm -hmm. do. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, again, the whole thing was at the time that Chara and Undertale was like with the Dreamers, um, was... You know, he and uh, Chara were like the same age or relatively close to the same age. They were like, mm -hmm. you know, but here it's it's like, oh, yeah, no. Asriel is in high school and like or no, is in college. Asriel's clearly yeah. much older than Chris. But with that logic that, again, in this world, boss monsters age slower than normal people do. I think it's a thing where. Asriel was always an older brother, not like college older, obviously, but an older brother to Chris instead of being like they were best friends of the same age ish, like in Undertale. And now the police are coming. Oh, <laughs> and well, we're hear that. cracking the code. Oh, no. Oh, no. They did not, oh, no. They, they me, they no. did not like that. 
<laughs> but, no, Kobe, but, that's no. something, but that's something I think it would also go with the finding Chris theory would be the thing of like, oh, again, because that would be a thing I would panic to do, especially if like back then the Internet didn't exist, like, you know, where they're implying in the in the thing where it's not as common. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh, yeah, if I found this baby and I'm a monster, I would I would go to a library and be like, yeah, how do I take care of this thing? And also <laughs> the fact that Chris got like really uncomfortable. If, if you notice that when we were in the library, when we go to the back, it's like, oh, Toriel checked out a lot of times, but Chris doesn't want to read the book. Yeah. Because when you start to try to read the book, Chris closes it and puts it away really quickly. Mm-hmm. Well, that, technically it was because in reaction to the fact that like you see strange human faces. That's why. And I think yeah. that could have to do with Chris like feeling a disconnect from living in a world of like living in a town of monsters mm -hmm. as the only human and not really fitting in. So it could be that like you see strange human face and you're like, I don't like that. Nope. Goodbye. Good. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, okay. And a dream brought up something. So I think here's the thing. Cause uh, they brought up the Dess's disappearance thing, which is really uh -huh. important in Delta mm -hmm. rune. It's really important. Um, I also do not think that was a recent thing. I think the police tape in Delta Rune is just a, it's kind of like the block traffic thing where Toby was yeah. just like, oh yeah, don't go here. Like, you know, like a video game thing instead of just having like a place you couldn't go. But I do think it's interesting that they're like, yeah, there's no crime here. And they put like a lot of emphasis on that. Yeah, I, so that was one of the things I wanted to bring up when it came to Asgore and Toriel, especially when Asgore got removed from the Force, because I have an inkling that it might have been because of that. No, I don't think that he did anything. I don't think he did anything. I yeah. feel like it might have been to where he was watching Asriel, Chris, uh, Des, and Noel, um, or something. Mm -hmm. Well, here's something. And something happened, maybe? I don't know. Or he was working on the case and it got too personal or something? Well, I don't know. Well, here's something I'm thinking about. Is, like, because... Because um, I was talking with Morgan about this a while ago, not, not like, mm -hmm. in stream or anything. But originally, I thought, like, oh, maybe, like, it's a thing. It was before, obviously, I played through it and I saw it and everything. But it was uh, where... I thought it was implied with, like, the Snowgrave route that, like, oh, yeah, if you kill Birdly, um, you know, the fact that he's dead when you wake up. Mm -hmm. But he's not, he didn't turn to dust because monsters turn to dust when they die. And I was like, well, what if Des, like, died, but her soul is stuck in the in the dark world? But then Morgan, you know, proved that that's not how that works. But I think, I think Des might be trapped in a dark world. And that's why really? they just can't find yeah. her. That's what I think. Um, I think she's I, trapped in a dark world somewhere. Yeah. Because the fact that she just, Dreamer, like, it's, like, vanished and weird about it, and they're trying to look up stuff, yeah. that's what I think, I think, anyway. I think at one point, uh, Dreamer and I were talking, and we did think of that, and um, uh, we thought that, because uh, when Noelle was talking about uh, uh, that time where Des, uh, her, Chris, and Azrael were hanging out, it was behind the graveyard, and I know you can argue that it's probably just the forest between the graveyard and the police station which i have no problems with you doing that i don't mind that i don't mind that idea but i also kind of think the only other place that we can have access to behind the graveyard or church is the bunker mm -hmm. which i think that does if she is trapped in a dark world it could be that bunker and that's probably why chris does not like that place or is scared of that place because something bad happened there What about you, Morgan? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> He's vibing. It's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I think the police tape, I feel like, would make my, maybe the most sense, but depending how long ago it happened, it wouldn't. Yeah. Because, like, if it is just she's missing, it would be a bit odd, like, that it, she's been missing, presumably, at least the way characters talk about it, it sounds like it happened a while ago. Yeah. Like, a, a, at least a few months, if not years ago. Um, so it would be weird that they still have police tape over there. I do think that has to be an area of interest, because we haven't been able to go over there. Um, but, uh, and it's weird that he would even make it, like, an possible or suggest that you could go that direction when you yeah. can't. Mm -hmm. Um 
because he could have just rounded off the street and just made it the end of the road. Um, but, uh, like, yeah. So I don't know if it would ha- it would be that, like, unless it happened recently, but characters don't talk about it like it happened recently. Yeah, well, that's you know the thing, I mean? too, because, yeah. like, a thing, too, is, you know, Noel looks, like, still is searching for her. Like, yeah. Like, you know, oh, that's the- another thing that I mm-hmm. never explained to you, Michi. So what I think is up with the wardrobe and, no- uh, not Noel. Oh, uh, right. Suzu, the, the, the clothes, like, I've yeah. never seen, i never seen Noel wear these. I think it was because Noel was trying to look up what her sister was wearing, the night or day that she disappeared because a lot of people do that when someone goes missing like Mm -hmm. this person wearing this stuff you're right i didn't think of that yeah but yeah it's sad (laughs) yeah Yeah, dreaming again yeah no that's the thing because like here's the The thing calendar Uh, again i 99% 99% sure that DES is for December holiday because some people are mm-hmm. like, but it's not DEC, it's DES. And I'm like, yeah, I have friends with nicknames too that don't spell. Yeah, my nickname but imagine, is- okay, but here's yeah. the thing that might be a pronunciation thing because yeah. literally it's fucking like, yeah. Because uh, if you they, imagine if Toby wrote DEC, you're going to think it says deck. Yeah. Not des, as no, in December. Not, no, but that's what I no, but that's what I mean. Like my nickname is Michi or Meech. That's not how you spell Michelle. <laughs> like yeah, you, you know it yeah. is not. I am not M I C H I E L L E. That's not how my name is. Yeah, it's like uh, so it's just you know, just sometimes that's how nicknames are, and that's like um, it's not super weird to assume that it's just like des versus december especially because literally while talking about her, about her sister we spell out the fucking word december yeah, i mean yeah. come the fuck on like, yeah well it's also again again it's the whole like oh when birdley's talking about the thing and it's like she didn't know how to spell december she just got upset and it's like yeah because that was probably her sister's name you know because yeah. her, her name's noel holiday her dad's rudy rudolph holiday december mm-hmm. holiday would make sense which is also why yeah. It but is. how is his, how do we know his name's Rudolph when they spell Rudy with a Y? There's not a Y in Rudolph. I know! Oh my god! How is so, this possible? Also, there's a thing in Asgore's, uh, there's a note in Asgore's shop where it's like, if you don't pay this, then you'll be evicted or whatever, and it has the letter C on there. I think that might be Christmas or some form of that. Christmas holiday. The mayor. Or well, some form of like Chris, uh, Christmas themes. Yeah, right. Names. Some kind of similar name. Yeah. 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 Which it would be funny if her name was Christmas only because Chris's nickname is, is Christmas. 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 Yeah, no, that would be really funny. <laughs> yeah. That'd be hilarious. Like Christmas. What, honey? No, I'm talking about the child, not yeah. you. I'm talking about <laughs> the weird kid that stares at Carol. Oh, Carol. Oh, yeah. 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 Carol. There we go. Carol, Carol. makes sense. Yeah. Carol, Carol, this, yeah. Don't worry Carol about Holiday it. makes a lot of Carol sense. Carol Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. I still like the idea of Christmas. Chris Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it listen, would be very funny. Listen, listen, I'm talking to Asgore's kid. Yeah, the one that just looks away when people talk to them. Don't know why. <laughs> They're just looking in another direction whenever we finish a sentence. Yeah, that yeah. kid. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just, I still, it gives, it make, creeps me out, but it makes me so happy that uh-huh. if you do choose, like, a rude gesture or something, Chris just looks at the camera and flips you off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I great. I love that. Yeah. Uh, it's um, the worst, but also it's so good. That makes me so happy. But also, um, <laughs> it creeps me the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Speaking of that, <laughs> I think too, that's Julia. a good thing because we've only touched on it here. We, y'all, we haven't really talked about Spamton. Oh, we've Spampton. only touched about him because well, we haven't. There isn't well, much I mean, else because well, he's no, kind of yeah. attached to other things. Well, no, as yeah, as yeah, as with but like the thing I wanted to say was the fact that I've seen people argue that they're like. Huh. Spamton's talking to the player, not Carol. Like, no, th- like in this instance, Spamton is talking to Chris. Yeah, yeah. Like it is clear, Spamton is talking. Literally, to Chris. it's it's fucking like maybe you can break out of your strings too. Like, why would they be towards yeah. us? Yeah, like, so people are like, oh, Spamton knows about. I'm like, yeah, and they're like, that's why. Sp-. I'm like, no, Spamton is literally talking to Chris. Wait, <laughs> Chris is the name of a knife? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I forgot. Wait, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a type no, of knife. It is. God, just, yeah. just, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I can't Chris believe is the it, name I for a knife, it. and it's also yeah. an, an anagram for risk. 
Yeah. God. You know, like how it goes how back to the coping mechanism nonsense we talked about. Yeah. Oh, I don't um, want to think about that. Stop it. <laughs> what, the coping mechanism one? It just never mind. No, not <laughs> for knives. I meant risk. Okay. Oh. No, I okay, didn't I'm mean sorry. it like that. I'm what? Sorry. What? <laughs> Don't she thought I meant no, self harm, Mitchie. Oh, no, Mackenzie. No, stop. No. no. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I meant risk because Chris is, <sighs> I, as I talked Trigger about before, warning. yeah, possibly like I meant more that like because Chris is potentially using the dark world as a coping mechanism. And is like, you know, you can die in the dark world, as is implied. Like, yeah. um, Sorry, because you could Chet. kill Birdie. I didn't mean no, to I have didn't. a whole ass conversation about it. No. Yeah, it was just the way you were talking about it. I was like, well, oh, also, God. Something I want to I bring up with Chris no. again is like, oh, a lot gosh. of people think. I would never. That, I know we, again, we talked about it kind of at the beginning, but I want to bring it back around where a lot of people bring up to how they're like, oh, yeah, Chris was like, like, when I'm saying this, it's, like, the people's version of it. It's like, oh, yeah, Chris was an evil kid. I'm like, no, nah, Chris was just troubled in my mind. Like, Chris wasn't no, a yeah. great kid, but they weren't, like, a monster either. Like, again, I, I think it's weird, but I think it shows the true thing where it's, like, at the end of chapter one with the knife and in the start of chapter two, a lot of people, I'm sure, thought, oh, crap. Chris is gonna go kill Toriel. That's like the implication. But no, all Chris does with their freedom at the end of chapter one is they eat an entire pie and then go back to bed. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Maybe yeah. implied they make the dark world in the computer lab. We're not sure about that. But we know yeah. for sure they at least ate the entire pie and then went back to bed. Because Toriel's yeah. there. And that's why yeah. I was confused. Well, also, well, also it's yeah. implied they also made a dark world while they were asleep. Yeah. Or yeah. while we uh, Toriel was asleep, I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, also, yeah, no, and I and yeah. if I've ever said that, I don't know if I've said it in stream. If I've ever said that, like fucking, like Chris is evil, I mean it as an antagonist thing, oh, no, not no, no. Oh, actually no, no. evil, because no, no, you they're didn't, child. But, <laughs> like no, you didn't. But yeah. I saw a lot of people that were like, yeah, no. I also I don't agree with people who also think either. that Chris is just purely like malicious evil. child. Yeah. I think they're troubled, and th listen, I think. They're evil in the sense that get therapy, child. Yes. <laughs> like, I, mean, not wait, in the, I mean, think about like, it. Their mom and I got divorced. Yes. Their brother went away to college. They're stuck to pick up all the pieces. As well as their mom's door is always locked. So mm -hmm. it, it really shows how closed up she is to her children and mm -hmm. anyone around her. Mm -hmm. As well as it, he, they barely see their dad i mean it's proven oh, no, that's chapter a one thing. how fucking surprised asgore was to see chris yeah yeah which also implies that without us chris wouldn't have seen asgore wouldn't have gone to visit him exactly right. what um, chris would have done most of the stuff we did in town because yeah. noel Everybody points out that how chris is acting because we're controlling them is really weird yeah yeah, Susie is either homeless or has a really bad home. Maybe she doesn't spend a lot of time at home due to bad home life. Yeah. That could be a thing, too. It could be that she's not homeless. It's just because I, I hate saying it. I've, I've known people like that. I like, like I like that Holly pointed this out, too. Also, troubled kids hang out together, and Susie is pretty much implied to be from a broken home. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Noel is also from a broken home. Yeah. Bradley is just... He, I don't think he has everything. Birdly is out. Birdly. <laughs> well, well, I think Birdly, like, because Birdly, well, Birdly doesn't even hang out with them. He had to insert himself well, because. Yeah. Well, no, Birdly. Well, I, well, I, I feel like Birdly I feel like that's going to change throughout the chapters, though. Yeah. Is what it's implied in chapter two. Yeah. I think that's also it was again with the fact that we're building the town. I think it's going to be a thing where like we're also giving Chris friends. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. remember, Toriel, um, also... Toriel was like. Chris, you have a friend? Like, that's that, like, that's so yeah. mean. Yeah. But that's that's how she is. Like, especially with the, again, the catalyst of, well, Asriel is, like, everybody's friend. Everybody knew Asriel in the town. But Chris yeah. didn't have, like, any friends. Um, also, I just want to touch on this. Mm -hmm. So, because I know I gone through this with the, the streams, but I want to mention it again, uh -huh. just in case uh, there are people that just come for the theories and not yeah. the actual gameplay. Uh -huh. um, I did mention, thank you, Julia. I did mention in one of the streams that uh, I do believe that Swatch is an art program. And... Oh, no, it's confirmed. Like, no. 
Well, no, it's it's confirmed because when we when he has the cafe, they literally give us a color code for a, a meal. Well, yeah, no, uh, I believe that Swatch is an actual art program, which I believe that everybody believes. Um, but Metaton came in uh, to the computer lab one day and basically designed the, his body, which Spamton used for Spamton Neo. Which is why that, w- but it never came to be because Alphys is not a scientist. So, th- mm-hmm. well, it's also why it said it was like, oh, yeah, the, des- the, 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 the design was created by a Lightner's dream. So, yes. it literally implies mm-hmm. that like, a Lightner went to the computer lab and, and then it was lost. Yeah, no, um, but it was a discarded project because it never came to fruition. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because Julia Nightmare said, oh, I mentioned your theory of Swatch being an art program and Metaton designing his body mm-hmm. on it in on a art video mm-hmm. where they swapped Spamton Neo and M- Metaton's outfits. People liked it. Yeah. Well, what's really funny, though, okay, yeah. is, so we're bringing up the art program thing, and I think because of just how everybody is, this is a theory, but I mm-hmm. think it's implied it's MS Paint, <laughs> because all of the people... I hope so. Really, no, listen, because all hope of so. the design are with such harsh, sharp lines, like you're using the yes. line tool in MS Paint. Yeah, and, and they're all, the like, bucket. really basic. Other yeah. than, like, I think, like, the boss dude himself, like, Swatch himself. Like, yeah. every, the Swatchlings are all just a strong pigment color. No, yeah. it's like, they're all strong, well, they're all strong pigment color, so but much. they're also really strong shapes. Again... Like, I say this because that's what I did when I was a kid. I took a mouse and I drew stuff in MS Paint with the line tool. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, just so you know, no, no. Uh, if, uh, 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 what? Oh, no. Were, were you going to answer your uh, friend's I was, comment? Yeah, I was okay, going to answer. Uh, the reason why it's Neo is because in Genocide, Metaton's body is named Metaton Neo. Yeah. Uh, and now it's spammed in Neo. Yeah, because in the Genocide route, the final boss is Metaton. Because, uh, spoiler for that, uh, Flowey mm-hmm. kills Asgore at the end yes. of the uh, Genocide route. And well, you... no, that's not true. Sans is the final. Well, okay, well, fine. <laughs> yeah. The final, final boss. But I, you, you know what final, I mean. Final, final boss. No, I understand. Go ahead. <laughs> but no, that's what I was saying. Was mm-hmm. Metaton's the final boss? Then you go to Asgore, and then Flowey kills Asgore, and then I think you kill Flowey, and then then Sans pops up. I think it was Sans and then Asgore and Flowey because you kill Flowey and then Kara shows up and is like, bitch, I run this world now. You're punished forever, bitch. Ha ha, loser. Kill this world. Also, I think it's implied. Maybe uh, maybe I'm wrong here, but this is my theory. I don't think Kara and Chris are the same person, like in the AU sense. I think they are like vastly different people. I do want to point out because I've, I've only noticed this now through fan art and stuff. Um, like, while well, obviously fucking uh, Chris wears the same colored shirt that Chara does mm-hmm. in Undertale, mm-hmm. the cape is fucking Frisk's yes. sweater. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was going and to say like, that. So it is, in a way, I don't think that they're either of them, mind you, but I, I think no. that it's very much an homage to that, at least. I love it, because I found a little video where it's just, like, Chris and Frisk talking, and then Frisk gives them their shirt and ties it around their neck, and then that's it's just really like, cute. Yay! That's, yeah, that's really cute. cute. I like it's that. so cute. And they're just, like, in their little battle poses and are like, yeah! And I'm like, yeah, I need that. <laughs> the good anyway, serotonin. Sorry. <laughs> um... <sighs> But uh, that makes sense. Perhaps it was rushed in the finish mercy route, and they were so easy to defeat. They're talking about uh, Metaton Neo in Undertale oh, specifically. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, they're ta- they're they were having a whole conversation while we were talking. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Y'all do that. That's all. <laughs> I'm over here gushing about Chris and Frisk. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Oh, I remember. What I want to say now. So this is a theory I have. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't have a lot of facts to go behind this besides just my, my own brain juices. But, yeah. so, in Undertale 1, again, th- I mean, I could have been proven wrong, but then with Deltarune, it could have been a thing where it's like, because I've seen this with Craters too, where they confirm something and then something else comes out and they're like, yeah, I'm just retconning that. So that, that yeah. can also be a thing here. But what I'm thinking is, so, at the start of Undertale, you know, we are Frisk and we fell down. 
but like it's the same kind of implication where it's like all right we have a name and everything but here's the thing once we beat undertale are you gonna say what i'm thinking i don't know maybe you are i think go ahead ahead. when you beat in the uh neutral route and the true pacifist route um your heart is gone and that's when everybody calls you frisk instead of whatever name you picked was you are now frisk and so that's mm-hmm. why I think the heart wasn't Frisk's either. I think it was somebody else. I think it's yes. whoever the player is. That's mm-hmm. so along the lines of what I was thinking. That's what they, cause I because it's the same. It's the same red yeah. heart. But now we are I, controlling a different yeah. person. Yeah, I was think I was going to say um, that I have basically literally what you just said. I think that Chris is obviously our vessel for Delta Room. Yeah, I think that Chris, uh, Frisk is our vessel for undertale because to further uh like help that theory that you're going along with uh Mm -hmm. once you defeat pacifist azrael's not talking to you as the player as usually he would when he's either the fucking uh fucking angel of death hyper death or flowey yeah he's talking to frisk yeah so yeah no Uh, i Mm. yeah you were you were saying exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, yes. Awesome. That's great. I'm, yeah. Uh, no, that's 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 what I think because uh, it's the <laughs> it's the whole thing. It's also why something else. I don't remember if we brought this up because we have now been going for two hours and thirty minutes. This yeah, is it's fine. Fun. I may or may not edit this down. I don't know. If you're watching on YouTube <laughs> and you get the full time, I'm happy you're here. Thank you on yes. Twitch for being live with us. This is also great for the live peeps. This is I love you guys. Fun. Yes. But um. <laughs> I don't know if we talked about it during the Gaster thing, but I also think, uh, just to go back to the Gaster theory for a hot second, the vessel we make is a grayed out vessel. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people imply that, like, whatever that is to is going to come back in some way. A lot of people originally were like, oh, it's just a haha joke. But then the fact that the stupid duck thing came back that we created, a lot of people think, like, again, that's why Ooh. that the vessel we originally make me mamo will, will, will be Mimamo like will be like a will thing return. yeah well, we will either see me mamo or like that'll be like Mimamo. again my my Mimamo. theory of the like we might end up like fighting like they might fight us the player as the final boss would be like oh, that sprite it would popping be Mimamo. out yeah oh, once God, we named it fun. we named it me mamo so <laughs> so it would be me mamo me mama. I know. Some people mama. on YouTube are like, "What the heck are you talking?" We we named our vessel Me Mama in our save. Me Mama. Well, no, so. we're not our vessel. We named. Uh, it asked us, "What is you, the player, called?" And we put oh, Me Mama. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So yeah. Oh, we named the we named the vessel Clem. No, we yeah. didn't name it Clem. <laughs> that's what oh, we called the vessel. Oh, Clem. We are oh, Me Mama. The vessel uh, is Clem. I feel so bad if I'm right, and then we get to the end, and it's like <laughs> here it is. Clem. I called Clem. Clem. I'm gonna. Hold because so many people did that it wouldn't even just be us you'd be like wow that is so anticlimactic now oh gosh um i wonder though because you can do chapter two without even making one yeah Um, you can do chapter two without doing chapter one you can but toby did say when the game's all out uh it is gonna like be implied yeah like it's gonna be like especially for like console ports it's gonna all be one save Mm. Yeah, uh, Julia says I've seen the theory that Kara is guiding Frisk through the underground, and Kara is inherently evil. Makes sense with Frisk being able to understand things they shouldn't understand. That's yeah, that's basically the, yeah. Well, no, that's the that's basically, the theory I thought was cr- uh, Chara is the narrator. Yes, that's in yeah. in, in Undertale. Like, but in mm-hmm. Undertale, they are the narrator. But that's mm-hmm. also why when it's like, you know, after all this, it's still you. That's like Chara talking to Frisk. Yeah. But then it's the thing where it's, you know, that's why it's like, oh, if you do the genocide route, it's like, after all, it's me. And it's, like, you know. Uh, the, well, I mean, consider this, Mitchie. Mm-hmm. You're, you died because of events that happened with you and Azrael. And you are buried in the beginning of the underground where presumably all the humans fell down. And you finally resonate with one human that fell down, which is named Frisk. You follow them throughout the underground, watching them murder all of your friends and family, 
I would figure that you would also be fucking pissed off and go ape shit with everything that the player is doing concerning genocide. Mm-hmm. Because I would. Oh, no, I would too. And punish them throughout the rest of the routes that you go on. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> and that's a game theory. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. It is well Please like, five. comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, <laughs> hashtag okay. not sponsored. I am making. Sponsored. I am making the joke, <laughs> but like seriously, if you guys have other theories, I would like to read them in the comments on yeah. like YouTube and stuff and things like that because these are fun. I have. I love. I love theories like this. Also, um, something else I think we should point out. Is I want to hope Sans is wrong, but I do think it's going to be two more years until we get chapter three, four, and five. Yeah. I hope, but at least we'll get them all. I hope. I at genuinely least it's not hope three. not. But at least it's not just <laughs> only one. I guess. Yeah. I'm just sad about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Also, yeah, Julia Nightmares. That's the thing. Basically, it's the player being evil, not for. Yeah, which is the theme in this one too. It's oh, like why the weird in. route is not pushed. Like even though Rousey is sus, he doesn't push you in the fucking real route. Uh, not yeah. at all. Yeah. He tries to keep you from it, if anything. It's clear. And also, it's only the player. So. And also in the weird route, um, until chapter two, where Noel is clearly like devastated, it's only Noel that has a problem with you know the thing. Like no one else seems to care, really. Yeah. Unless Susie's yeah. dialogue changes, but I didn't think she did. If you just like decide to be a murder hobo, so. So y'all know how y'all were talking about how like. Uh, Chris could be mad at Rosie because Rosie is trying to help them. Mm-hmm. What if, so I know if you do like the weird route, it's just like, it's a whole like genocide under tell type of situation where Kara is just pissed off that you murdered everyone that they loved. Yeah. But um, I'm wondering if since you don't do that and the other routes and whatnot, you're basically leading a, uh, towards Rosie's plan of like helping Chris is that maybe why they well that what and being controlled what? by us yeah because like, yeah, I'm confused. okay what so do you mean? no Sorry. i'm confused okay, no, you've so, lost me so, <laughs> so you under so okay you had me and then you lost me <laughs> yes so chris is, could potentially be mad at Rosie for basically making them uh, setting them on a path to basically self-help, uh, helping themselves. Mm-hmm. That you, we got that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So forget like going on the weird route. Forget about like uh, Snowgrave and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So if you go on the path that Rosie wants you to take, which is basically sparing everybody as well as sealing the fountains, mm-hmm. what if? On top of us controlling Chris, what if they are also mad that we are helping Rosie's plan blossom? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, that's no, what no, I'm thinking no, it that's, is. That's what I'm thinking. It's it's cause, yeah. cause, Unless again, you take I, the weird route and it's just like, fuck everything. We are killing everyone. Yeah. Let's which go. is totally the opposite because then we're yes. not helping at all. Which is um, basically, which is what I was yeah, saying is basically an undertale genocide situation where yeah. Chris... Or Kara does not want that to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, cause that's why it's like, again, breaking it down, like fundamental, what I think I've gleaned from have this whole discussion. Thank you, chat. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the fact mm-hmm. that like, I think that Rousey's whole thing is that like, these are unhealthy coping mechanisms. You can't be this absorbed into your fantasy worlds kind of a thing. And like, so I'm going to seal it. We're going to seal it together. Come on. Yeah. And so like, and obviously Chris is not happy about that because Chris enjoys probably being in the dark worlds. It's mm-hmm. probably why they keep making them. Um, well, something else. But uh, yeah. Well, no, I was going to say uh, something else I noticed that I, I didn't know how to bring up, but I my, my, my brain kicked back in. It was like, remember the thing? You want to talk about the thing. So it has to do with this. So in our bedroom in the overworld, um, in Delta Rune chapter one and chapter two, Chris's side of the bedroom is like disturbingly bare besides the rusty cage and the blood stain. While Azriel's mm-hmm. side has all these trophies, the CD, the computer, the money we reluctantly borrow, you know, that kind of stuff. But when we mm-hmm. go into our room in the castle, 
Mm-hmm. It looks it's like as it's Azrael side, side of the room. Yeah, yeah. it's got every. It's mm-hmm. plus, the plus the moss. Plus the moss. <laughs> no, Chris got his. Chris got their moss. So Chris got their moss. But like, th- and th- that was something I always wondered where it could have been a thing where, with a theory of Ralsei being like you know again the, the representation and stuff like that uh, of like mm-hmm. what we were talking about earlier about like you know Chris or like like you know Morgan jokingly is like a fursona that kind of thing like the idealized version of what Chris yeah. wanted which is why they you know have resentment towards it yeah. uh, towards plus him. I hate yeah. I hate that part of me can kind of like relate I don't, I don't want to call it directly jealousy but it's something to be said that there are younger siblings that envy their older siblings especially mm-hmm. if their yeah. younger siblings are like popular or they have a skill I mean, that they're I speak from personal experience. I also speak from personal experience when I say you can look up to someone and still be jealous of them. No, exactly. I was like Like, that with my brother. Oh, no, I I will fully admit that. And I was the opposite. I was the older sibling, but I, and I I have no shame in this. Um, I had undiagnosed dyslexia throughout like most of, Mm -hmm. well, not most of, almost all of my academic life until I was in college. And then I didn't recently, I had theories, but I wasn't proven to be on the spectrum until literally like this year at the time of recording this through my therapist. And I'm literally 28. So like I had such a hard time with school and especially I, I bring up school because my brothers, it was so easy for them. And I always felt so bad for wanting that because I was the older sister. I was the oldest and I was the only girl. So I was like, well, I shouldn't be jealous about my little brother's success, but I am. And so mm-hmm. that's something I think too, where it could totally be a thing too, because it also could be implied that in this world that Chris knows in the in the town of monsters that basic human stuff doesn't count. So maybe Chris wasn't good at sports, not because they were bad at sports, but because they were a human and they were created to be monster sports. Mm-hmm. you know like may- god i can relate to that <laughs> no but see what i mean like so that could have been a thing where it's yeah. like oh yeah here's your brother which, like yeah mm-hmm. yeah which is a fascinating discussion to have because like that puts all three of us on very different sides of the argument because i was mm-hmm. not this is just so we, we get it clear for the check because i was not the younger sibling who was envious of an older sibling i was the sibling who was envied yeah which mm-hmm. sucks to be on by the way <laughs> Not a great, not a lovely, fun relationship to have with your sibling. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which he's not but, speculating either. Like, he has proof behind that, so that's why he's saying it. Yeah. No, then my, I've yeah. been told to my face. Yeah. So, and then, um, uh, Mackenzie, where are you on the spectrum? Were you the younger I, sibling? I was, well, I am the youngest of four. Um, oh, I didn't me. know it was four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, my brother was big into, like, athletics and such like Mm -hmm. football and powerlifting and track and uh i was that nerdy art kid that didn't like athletics and such and uh when i was in middle school i had that like deep like i looked up to my brother a lot and i still Mm do but in middle school i also had that like envious uh thing going on with like there's not a lot of stuff, especially in a small town, there's not a lot of stuff uh, for art uh, students or anything mm-hmm. to, like, really do and make people see that we have a pretty great thing going for us as well. Like, people in uh, small town Texas with athletic stuff and all, it's like... I couldn't really prove myself at the time, but my brother could. So I was very jealous of that sort of stuff, which made me feel like maybe I should go into sports, which I never did. And I'm thankful that I never did. So I was on that mm-hmm. side. Yeah. Uh, I am I literally relate to Chris directly. Oh, no. I, I, I do, too, in a way. And I think that was the in- intention, because, like, uh, in the mm-hmm. chat, something brought up was, you know... Uh, someone brings up how, like, literally everyone besides Ralsei wants to stay in the dark world because they can be their best person there. Again, look at Susie. Susie has all this power, like, learning magic, doing all this yeah. stuff, and they can... It's and- the, yeah, it's the idea of having... Having like, your own... Control family. in your own kind of... I don't want to say fantasy, because it's obviously not a fantasy world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you know, it's just having the power of, like kind of a world designed for you in a sense Mm -hmm. as opposed a world designed to entertain you to be honest because they're all entertainment objects or at least they have been um 
And it's like, so of course they wouldn't want to leave because it's it, it's escapism. It's yeah. a good it's a good thing in small doses, but not living there, so to speak. Which it seems like that's kind of the direction it's going now, and I'm kind yeah. of curious if they keep with that. I do but... too. Well, we'll definitely know in chapter three. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh... I'm very curious how. Like, because now that we have so many of these things that are like out there, it's I'm curious when they're going to be brought up as a plot point, yeah. so to speak. Um, because it's like it could be the whole game, or it could be like literally the next chapter. We don't know. Oh, yeah, we really so, don't know. I'm I just hope we see Susie Zilla in chapter. Yes, two. I hope so too. I okay. I think we th- they hinted at it, and then it's like. Susie even brought up the whole, also, I love when I, yeah. we have big monster movies yeah. over big human movies. I also mm-hmm. didn't, I didn't say this because I didn't want to interrupt the scene, but the monster in the movie is has literally the exact it's color the same Susie color does. Susie. Yes. No, it's a purple monster. Literally yeah. exactly well, the same. Well, they also brought it up with the Ferris wheel thing with Noelle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, being Susie. Uh, Did you think about that a lot? Yeah. No. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Good night uh, Dreama, by the way. Yeah. Um, thank but you no, for coming yeah. to our town. Something I wanted to say, though, is uh, Julia Nightmare is, um, if my idea of Chris being a band at the bunker is correct in any capacity, that could lead into more resentment towards humans as well and being humans. Plus, you know, the trauma of knowing that you weren't wanted by their bio parents added to it. Though I have a sub theory that maybe Chris's parents lived in the bunker and died or something while Chris was little and couldn't remember them. That is fucked up. Be okay, but in this lot. world, listen, listen, it's it's no, it's it, not out of the range. Out I mean, listen, of, Susie's no. probably homeless. Like, yeah, Susie's homeless. Considering... Again, it's one of those things where because yeah. that's that's the thing with Susie is it, it's oh, this is gonna be so mean, but it's like now that I know what I know, I'm like, you know what? I hope Susie is homeless because <laughs> if we no, because think about it, she would rather be homeless and drinking alley milk. Than being with her family, that kind of says a lot to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I've also, again, I, have I feel also like she's because we didn't even mention it in the the ending scene, but like whenever Toriel's like, "Oh, make sure you call your parents." Literally, she waits until Toriel yeah. walks up and immediately runs away from the phone. So yeah. she probably did not touch the thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, which is why I think that she's probably homeless uh-huh. rather than actually has a family to yeah. call. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. It's exciting. I love it. And I want more. <laughs> oh, that's something else, Holly. I didn't even think of like, You're right there. That's, oh, I know, yeah. That was really interesting. Yeah. I didn't even put that there. Um, Holly brought up, you know, there's an interesting yes. that, the, yeah, it's interesting that there's a war between human and monsters and Undertale and the bunker in Deltarune is literally used during like war times, you know? Yeah. Although, granted, I don't think the game calls it a bunker. That's just what we've been calling it. Yeah, I don't think there's an actual name for it, but watch. There's probably a YouTube video where, like... Yeah, it could be I the laboratory. Through, it's I just, like, it's easier... The yeah, true it lab. It a, so oh, oh, my God. True yeah. lab 2.0. The true lab. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> I've, also oh my seen, God. I've also seen people theorize that they're like, oh... What if Sans and Papyrus are from Deltarune? So not that Deltarune's a prequel, but like for them with the yeah. weird machine in the basement, it's um, like that's why, you know, a, a, either way we know with Blookie not being, you know, at a ton, like we know and we love, <laughs> um, which hurts. Um, Morgan put it out, but I, I'm, I'm also like, Papyrus is not going to be the Papyrus we know and love. That is, that, no. there's no yeah. way. With how they're hinting at things, if he's not already kind of, you know. I'm scared for him. I hope he's okay. Ooh, I wonder. Ooh. Yeah. This is a horrible thing to think about. But fucking, if they are from Deltarune, hypothetically. We yeah. don't know if this is, like, before Deltarune or at, or, like, mm-hmm. we don't know if Deltarune, like, even if they, okay, if it is multiverse and mm-hmm. Sans and Papyrus are from Deltarune, at the moment, we don't have any proof whether or not They've been to Undertale before or after this story takes place, yeah. so to speak. Is it possible that the reason why Papyrus we know is in is that in Deltarune, in the re- like this world, that Papyrus is like has no friends, has no purpose in life. Maybe I, I would guess if he's depressed, it probably has to do with like I feel like I can't do anything right or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't feel cool. Blah 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 yeah. blah. If it was that when they went to Undertale. He found a purpose, finally. That's what, no, that's what no, like, no, And he that, got hooked on it. No, you and say that's that, why he's so no, energetic. You say that, but that's what I think, because his whole thing in, his whole thing in Undertale, originally, is he wants to be like a royal knight, like really, really, really bad. Yeah. 
I, f- I forgot to mention, though, that the uh, machine in Sans's workshop. The broken one? It's completely broken, and yeah. it says that there's no way. there. It's it's most likely not being. It it cannot be fixed, is basically what it says. Yeah. It cannot be mm-hmm. fixed. Yeah. Um, which imply. I, I, there's no, like, sense of, like, what that machine was or is, but I have an inkling that it might have been because uh it was a multi-dimension uh traveling machine or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. um that can which again, that teleport you through time and, and space, space. <laughs> yeah which which, which um, i would totally believe because again this isn't this isn't a theory it's confirmed that sans knows about the multiverse and stuff yeah, he's meta as so, well. Yeah, because there's even I, a part, I, I don't remember yeah. which route, I don't remember which route, but there is a line that he strictly says in Undertale that's something like, oh, I'll tell the other Sans about you or something like that. Because that's where the whole, like, that's where Tumblr went nuts and they made, like, all the AUs of Sans was because there was a canon yeah. line of, like, yeah. other Sanses existing. Well, mm-hmm. not only that, I think... I think there's a whole other like machine for the, like the AU traveling mm-hmm. type thing, and I think that's what it will, is in the workshop, which could also probably be what Gastric created and was ultimately killed over. Um, maybe because a lot of people think that it's the core, but like the core is basically the energy source for all of the, the underground. underground yeah. So it wouldn't make sense on why that would be the thing that kills him to where it splits his soul into like through t- time and space um but uh yeah. what was i going to say well Fuck. like i don't um, i do not believe the th- <laughs> i don't believe the theory that sans and papyrus are gaster because i've seen a lot of people be like no That's i don't think so. with signs in space it was gaster no. split into two people i'm like no, no. i do not believe that one <laughs> uh but uh i what I was going to say... Oh, fuck, I forgot what oh, I was I'm going sorry. to say. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Hold on. God. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that could be what uh, ultimately makes them travel through uh, the alternate universes, and then the doors are just the things that Sans basically teleports with, well, which yeah, makes sense for the Dark Worlds to for tra- fast yeah. travel. Which also is why in it, in the overworld of Undertale, Sans can just fast travel places. Like, it's a joke that he is, like, the sentry guard in every town, right? Mm-hmm. It's why mm-hmm. he has the same thing that's got ice on it. Like, even in the hot zone, they're like, how is there snow on top of that guy's little station? Yeah. Uh, uh, Julia I think, says, I yeah. think Papyrus has a line that implies he knows about Sans's time and space thing. I think he asked... If Sans is pranking you across or through time and space, implying Sans does has done that before. Yeah. Um, I also know that uh, in in the official Undertale art book, which I have, I'm not trying to say it to flex, but it is there. Um, there's like some sketches and doodles like from Toby where uh, originally Papyrus was supposed to have a version of the Gaster Blaster. But there was like a note next to it that said something like "too complicated, don't use." Yeah, that's probably what was supposed to be his special attack. That's what I. That, that's what I think it yeah. was. And that's why you it's know, like that wait for sense. my special <laughs> attack, and then you know nothing happened. That's what I yeah. think it yeah. was. Yeah, because it was like coding too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh god. I, well, is that it's it? about one a.m. Yeah. I, uh, I should probably go to sleep. Yeah, well, no, we should. Yeah, say, we have I, school tomorrow. I, yeah, I was gonna say. I think, that's I think we got so. all of our thoughts. Yeah, much. I, yeah. Think, I think so too. So, thank you guys for being here the whole time. I hope you had fun. Um, yes, thank, thank you, you yes. for the people on stream, and thank you for the people on YouTube who are watching the playback. We love you all so so much. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoy, and yeah, we will see you guys next time. Thank Bye-bye. you all for letting us Bye. talk your ears off. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm Michi. If you're new here. I am Zodiac <laughs> or Morgan uh, or whatever. I'm I'm Mackenzie. Why are we introducing? I don't know. I'm also, I don't know. I'm also <laughs> tired. I'm, I'm also tired. All right. You know what? All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs>